Yeah. So this is Heather. Thank you, Heather, for coming. The only one you don't know, I guess, is Lori and Celia. That's me. Part of our rec crew here. You certainly know Denise. Yes, we do. And then you already you just got intro to D. Um, so yeah, we are the powers of the year. <laughs> do we know if, um, is Kathy coming? I don't know. Okay, okay. so we can. Oh, is she? Good for her. <laughs> So I think part of the reason, Heather, why we wanted you here is, and we, you know. Can I yes, yeah. get started? Sure. I need Heather's last name. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's on M-U-Z-E-R-M-U-Z-E-L-O-L-L. -L. O-L-L. Yep, hyphen boy, R-O-Y. <laughs> so Heather is the rec director in Elliott, and um, we already talked for but, um, and I shared some of that with them, but you know what, there were a lot of questions that came back, so, you know, I'm just going to kind of let you, and, and, or, or we can start, you know, wherever, but I know, you know, one of the things that you said to me that when we met was, I found, it stuck in my head, was like, you know, we really needed support 100% of the principal of a grade school, and so I kind of wanted you to share that relationship, you know, and, um, so that we can make our school, our community building like you guys sure. have done. Yeah. yeah, so I guess a tiny bit of background before we jump into the school. I did have a building, and um, it got unfortunately infested with mold. I really missed that small little, it was like a house, it was a two-story house, I loved it. Um, but they ended up, instead of fixing it, it turns out it cost too much to tear it down. It ended up being a great fire um, training day. So, um, mm -hmm. so. Um, so with that, then we were kind of stuck at the fire department, not stuck necessarily, but you know, we kind of didn't know which direction we were going to go, um, so we were able to go into the fire department, not run our program for course, but just had office space, which was okay, but obviously, you know, at the time I had, there was uh, five of us, so in one room half this size, so it was a, it was a lot. Um, and then the school, at the time, um, I was very anti-school. I think I was just kind of being bratty um, because I really wanted a building. So I was kind of putting my foot down a little bit about there was money set aside for a building. And um, I presented like this $250,000 slab and, you know, people got their hands on it and it ended up being a million dollar building, which of course everybody turned down. So <laughs> once that happened, of course, um, I kind of had to back up a little bit. So that's how the school came into play. There was an empty classroom on the bottom floor. So it couldn't have been any better of a situation for us. There were a couple other classrooms upstairs, but logistically and security wise, I was not a fan. You know, that's one of the, that was one of the biggest concerns I had is we have a lot of in and out and with the school and lockdowns and the craziness of the world now, I was very hesitant about how we were gonna get our customers in to come in, you know, freely without it being an issue. So once I kind of gave into the idea of the school and the principal was amazing, she's the one that offered. So I give her 100% credit, you know, for saying she wanted to help the community. All of our programs are already after school. So we have our before and after school program, and then we use the gym. Sometimes they gave us a classroom depending on space and availability, but it only seemed right that, you know, we moved forward with that. So we basically turned a classroom into office space in a, um, probably about this size, I would think. I turned one spot into a closed door office. And then my two other staff, you know, we made nice little office workstations. And then um, it was pretty convenient to, because we were so close to um, the cafeteria, which was where our after, before and after school program was. So it actually worked out quite nice. It took about six months maybe to get everything going. Um, and besides, you know, some glitches with security and making sure, you know, we had the same access that to the schools. Everybody has to be beeped in. Our doors locked all the time. Um, getting used to those things, it's worked wonderfully. Um, and the principal to this day has been very. We we barely see them, you know, but because we take in most of their kids after school, I mean, they kind of the relationship that we have is is very open. You know, there's believe me, it hasn't been perfect. You know, we have my meetings with principal next week about some glitches and things that we'll go over or new ideas. 
Um, we certainly have to follow their fire drills and their safety things and all of the things that I would expect to do, which is not a big thing. Um, we get outside once a month, not a huge thing. Um, so it's been, we're going on our, what year are we in, 2019? I think we're going on our fifth year at the school. So in the beginning it was a three year lease and um, now we just keep leasing it year to year, relatively inexpensive, which is really nice. Um, this year it's $2,700, $2,750. So you mean you pay? We pay the school district. Mm -hmm. School district, okay. Yep, we pay a lease fee, which basically is um, any maintenance that I might need in the classroom, they take care of our garbage. We have tagged into their internet, and that's the only thing we've tagged into. Um, so just more upkeep, you know, more than anything, even though we do most of the stuff ourselves, but it's just, you know, $27 a year isn't that, not really that big of a deal. So I'll, I'll take it over a building, of course. So, um, so right now it's worked wonderfully. It, of course, there's always a conversation about having a building again. Um, when I'm there, but it's it's worked. We've made it work. Um, again, it's not perfect, but you know when there is an issue, we certainly have an open conversation with the principal right away, and that's happened very frequently. So, um, so I'm not sure if that's I'm talking too fast or what's the grade yeah. level there at the, at the school? What Pre K to third grade. See, Marsh is funky because we've got Pre K to third, and then we go fourth to fifth to another school, and then we migrate again at sixth, seventh, and eighth. So, so we only go um, pre-K to third, yeah. but we take in kindergarten to fifth grade at our before and after school program. Um, what does that just so we get yeah. the, so our before and after school program, which is kids play, um, it's always been there. It used to be called kid care. So when kid care kind of, I don't think that they went under or anything like that. I'm not sure what the changeover was because we were the recreation department that we were the next one to be asked. Um, if we would want it. And it's literally just a drop off in the morning before school, and um, then the kids go to school, and at the end of the day, we take them until six o'clock. So it's a before and after school program, so we offer you know, snack and activity, and at the end of the day, there's homework time. Um, we so do the fourth and fifth graders get bused over there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Yep, we have a pickup right at the, um, at the elementary school, right outside the elementary school, well, similar to the, close to the elementary school. Is kindergarten to fifth grade. Five. Yep. Um, we would like to take in kindergarten, I mean not pre-K for the before and after school program, but we're a licensed program and it would affect our license. We'd have to have more staff and we can barely get the staff now. <laughs> so. And, but your other offerings include pre-K. Oh yes, yeah, we started, we started two years old. So if that's one of your revenue sources then, is your- Kids Play is huge. That yep. big revenue for yep. you to fund your other projects. Yeah, so, but in hindsight, so how our programs, and they're trying to do just now general funding, um, it's an enterprise account. So Kids Play money <laughs> literally goes back into Kids Play, and then all of my other for programs and on my summer camp called Youth Bound will be in another it's all one big account, but I still budget them separately. Mm -hmm. That's so what we do on the team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you are maintaining your own accounts. You don't have to turn your revenue, uh, offsets revenue every year to the town. Um, yes and no, okay. because they mm -hmm. do they do require a percentage mm -hmm. to be somewhat turned over because they do give us insurance. So right now, like. I mean, uh, liability insurance? Yeah, no, um, staffing insurance. So right now, I'm the only employee 100% supported by the town. Okay. Then I have my two other full-times that are based on revenue, mm -hmm. and then their insurance is picked up by the town. Medical, are you talking about medical yes. insurance? Yes, yes, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, but revenues, we do offset awesome. some of that. Yeah, to offset that. So, and I was telling Kelly before, but one of our staff members, which would be huge for you or for anybody, is to get a partnership with a hospital. I mean, New York Hospital helps pay for almost, well, a little less than half of one of our employees' salaries. So, and that was, and that was a partnership that was developed, I think, in 2001. And um, at the 
time when it was just a two-person department. Mm -hmm. um, York Hospital was huge at the time with Kittery, but now they've branched out to Wells and any place that they really have their walk-in clinics, and we were able to get in back then, mm -hmm. and so we are able to get so much a year to offset his salary, which is huge. It's amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I can't imagine, you know, you know, it's a big chunk of change that wouldn't have to go away. So, mm -hmm. so I'm thankful that that still happened. So, but you, of course, you know, what, you know, I still would like to work out and branch out other hospitals, big businesses, you know, as well, might be able to do the same thing. We just haven't got to that. Do you have to renew that grant every year? Yeah. Do you apply? Yeah, so what I do every year is I kind of just send a, send a friendly, you know, had a great year, looking forward to another partnership with you, what would you like for me? And normally I don't have to do much um, other than send in um, a new request and then I get paid twice a year. So, that's awesome. Yeah. So you do turn money over. Yeah. Just for insurance or any it's kind of, you make? Would not all, yeah, so it's one big general fund. So anything that I would make goes back into the general fund and then I go in from, and then I take from there. So, okay. yeah. Okay. Did you want to ask her her budget? <laughs> no, it's no, I don't want to cry. <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was kind of a, a fascinating year, she told me. Well, and it's, and it's hard. Um, you know, with staffing, staffing is, is our biggest part of the budget. Yeah. Obviously, um, with kids play, I have to have nine, eight or nine on staff. So that's a huge chunk right there. Yeah. And for youth bound, my other summer program, um, I have two in addition to my full timer. So I'm talking about 11, 12 staff in the summertime, which is, you know, that's, that's, that's a huge, yeah, that's a huge amount. Yeah. I did give up parks. I did have parks in my budget for years and years. Um, so then I would oversee two of those people, but I've since turned that over to public work, so it's one less, one less budget part of it to, mm -hmm. to deal with. But so revenue, I mean expense-wise, oh boy, what did I say to you? Um, it's four hundred and something. Yeah, it's it's a little four hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. Not four hundred thousand. Yeah, four hundred thousand yeah. something. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. about yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly. And you pretty much get your revenue for that. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. So. In a year, maybe not, but because we're on a, it's almost like that enterprise account, like so any money that I made last summer is basically going, going into this summer, so mm -hmm. it's that revolving, mm -hmm. you know, revolving account that I have to rely on. Mm -hmm. So um, so for the most part, you know, there's some times that I'm definitely not at that point, but I've had that money left over from the year before, mm -hmm. so it just revolves. So what, it, what other revenue sources do you have other than your before and after care? So before and after school is the biggest one, and then besides kids play, then we have um, all of our um, youth programs, which is huge. So my program coordinator does anything outside of the kids play programs, such as Pee Wee Gym, our youth leagues are huge, we have basketball, flag football, and soccer, so that's a big chunk right there for those are eight youth programs. Um, is that after school or is that in the summer? That would be after school, okay. yep, after school and Saturdays. Okay. Um, so Mad Science, we contract a lot too, which is something you guys might want to look into because it doesn't really cost you anything mm -hmm. and you get revenue for not doing anything. So anybody we contract right now, we require so much a person, basically it's free advertising for them. So mm -hmm. you know, if they're charging 50, we'll say 60 and we take them at $10 a head for not really doing that much. Mm -hmm. um, but it's great because they're bringing their staff and, and so on and so forth. I think you said before. So and they're they're really big. We've just teamed up with an out, the, an outdoor adventure program, which just we had to add another session because it's so big. Um, so the coyote thing, yeah, yeah, which is huge. Yeah. Yeah. My, my son does that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coyotes. coyotes. It's wow. Coyote. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I love that. So that's pretty big. So so that's another revenue source. Um, seniors. So my program coordinator also does seniors, and he'll do um, trips with them every other week, and then one big trip a week, uh, a month as well. And those are day trips. Mm -hmm. um, so, so three trips a month? Yeah, yeah, they do breakfast um, every other Monday, and then they'll do one big trip as well. So it's two things of three, yeah. Yeah, I'd like to do, obviously we'd like to do more, but we can't have them do that. Now when you go to the, with the senior trip, is that your own van? Yeah. You guys yeah, so we had a bus that I had a grant for, um, and we had a bus, and it just 
recently died last year. We were going to put the money into it, but the bottom was rusting. It was just, and I really actually wish I had kind of stayed with the bus. We ended up going to a van because um, it was more practical for spaces and things. Seniors have a little bit of a harder time getting into getting it. In like yeah, yeah, so, um, but eventually I'd like to get another bus to go with the van. But it is huge because on our, sh even our smaller days in the summer, we might just grab a bus, our van, save money on the bus, mm -hmm. the big bus. Right. Um, our program coordinator has a Seacoast Adventure program and he puts the kids in the van and they go all over the Seacoast doing trips. So, so it has come in handy, but I had a CIP for it to offset some of the money I lost on the bus. So, so you're talking about pop up school bus that you had? No, we actually, yeah. Well, in the summertime, we have a, yep, the big fun yellow buses mm -hmm. to go for camp. But I actually had a, we actually bought a uh, 15 passenger white oh, a 15 yeah, bus bus. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like we have, have. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we just, we got rid of that and now we got the van. So, 15 passenger van. So, did your revolving fund buy that? Like yeah. So, we, uh, that was actually a CIP. So, we had a capital improvement plan for the, um, and at the time, I was hoping we were going to gain two until the bus died. And that's what I'm going to use that money for the van. So, um, so now I'm going to try to put more money in it again <coughs> because I would like to have two vans. So when you say CIP, is it town funded CIP yes. or you funded nope. CIP? No, that's town. town. Yep. Yep. So I guess just to clarify, like, what's the difference for me? Um, anything in appropriations would be my office supplies, computer stuff, um, cell phones. I don't have to do electricity. Um, things that would keeps our office floating, so to speak. So that actually gets voted on by the town every June. Mm -hmm. And that's not a huge budget um, at all. Like I said, I get rid of parks. So I probably only, I probably only request maybe 30 for appropriations. And then a CIP is a separate budget item, and that can be anywhere from, you know, seven grand to, you know, whatever I want to put in a year. Mm -hmm. So 30,000, correct? Yeah. Okay, and that okay. covers office supplies? Yeah, it covers, it covers um, things to keep us like basically running. Yeah, it, but not utilities because we pay our um, um, the school, but the school is part of appropriations as well. I have to put in a budget for that. So that's part of your, your yeah. operating, town's operating yep. budget is yeah. your, oh, yes. your uh, rent? Yes. Okay. Yep, the school, yep, absolutely. And you said office supplies, school rent, and then cell phones? Yeah, office. cell phones, anything <coughs> contracted, like <coughs> computer IT, um, my brochure that we put out, um, just to name a few things. And then you have a CIP plan yep. for other stuff. Yep, bigger okay. stuff. Anything over $5,000 then requires a, then a separate budget. And I was looking at the funding sources for New Hampshire, and it falls the same way. It's like any capital improvement plan, uh, facilities, stuff like that. Yep. Would fall under the town's capital yeah. improvement yep. plan, and we'd ask to be put on there for yes. such items. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, what I would be interested in is if you can talk a little bit about um, like use of the gym and yep. other, because um, I know you run programs also out of Marshall High School and Marshall Middle School, so how does how does that all work? So all of our youth is out of the elementary school. So basically what we do, they still require a building use form. So we'll put in a request, nothing's ever guaranteed. Um, we'll put in a request for usage on any given day, any certain time, and any length of time. And that's how we'll judge our time frame for programs. So um, we, they do not give us a classroom anymore. Years ago we used to have a classroom space and they don't give us a classroom anymore. So I kind of had to be a little bit smart about that and they, <laughs> we've taken the cafeteria and put a curtain um, kind of across in a small section. So we can have two spaces. So we have a um, program that my coordinator runs. He can kind of use it, kind of probably half this space. Mad Science goes in there. Um, Coyote Club meets in there if it's raining. So we do utilize the cafeteria quite a bit for things like that. And then the gym. Um, Kyle uses the gym on Saturdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. And then I have adult programs in there on Thursdays and Sundays at the elementary school. We don't run anything out of the middle school other than my men's league, which is on Sundays. And we have
of adult soccer on Sundays at the high school. Wow, we're all over the place. So now as far as um, like PEs and med, so do you, do you have to ask, so how does the middle school work? Is that just like a space thing too that you yeah. ask for that? And yep, so I send in a building use form um, to the principal there with my dates that I need for my, um, um, for summer camp, which would be youth bound. So Kyle takes care of that part. Yeah. Um, and we're given um, the gym, we're given the cafeteria for that. And then for that though, we have to leave two weeks prior to camp because now they want to get their stuff in before summer. Right. Same with the kids play, except for an after school program, we have to end two weeks early as well, um, which makes the parents super happy. Um, <laughs> that's usually when everybody takes their vacations. And then um, building use for that, keys wise, I have a key that kind of bounces between me and the program coordinator for camps. And then my men's basketball league, we kind of just transfer, um, which, which is great about the school because, you know, they trust us enough to have two keys. So, yeah. you know, um, which is nice. The high school, we're fortunate. We don't have to worry much about that because the assistant, the uh, principal actually is part of that program. Yeah. Play. Yeah. Yeah, so he, lets, he lets everybody in for that. So yeah. I don't have to worry about, much about that, but I don't think it would be an issue if we had to get a key for that as well, a spade key. So, um, so let me just ask you for a that, let's just take that program. If the principal didn't play, I would have to be there. Okay. Yep. I would have to go. So on Sunday nights for men, my men's basketball league, my schedule is part of the men's basketball league. Okay. So um, I work Sunday nights yep. from April to June okay. to make sure they're open. And sometimes I have a supervisor that closes for me, but he doesn't need a key for that. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, but I'm there every Sunday. Okay. Yeah. So. They just got changed. Yeah, the whole building is locked. Every door has now a bar on the end. I know, they changed it though, right? Because mine didn't work anymore. Uh, they had to be re-registered. Oh. So, my, one of my questions is like, do you get group tickets and then distribute them? I know some communities say, is that true? Like, get yeah. on town tickets. Yeah, we haven't done it in a couple of years. Um, we did have questions about it this year. So, I'm not sure if we'll do it again. It's more, I don't want to say it's bother, I don't want to say that, but in the summertime when everybody wants those, is our, it's just me in the office, so it's harder, it's harder for people to get there, even though I'm there 90% of the time, um, it's always that 10% that I'm not there and everybody <laughs> wants their tickets, so we haven't done it in a couple of years, so we weren't, I mean it wasn't making a huge amount of revenue, so it didn't really hurt us any by not doing it, um, and I also think that our library offers, so I think we just kind of let them do it, but I'm not sure if that's the case right now, so. But we used to. We used to do it with Water Country, used to do it with Fun Town. Turns out they're really expensive now. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> really expensive. so when you utilize the uh, uh, the other facilities, do you do they have to have the staff there as well as you, or are you the staff? Um, it depends. So right now, um, if I so I have a pickleball group on Thursdays. So that that group right there, they. I'm technically there, but they do, they run the entire program. So I don't necessarily have to be there the whole time because my program coordinator is finishing up with a program. So with him finishing up and them entering, we're basically covered, so to speak. Um, my men's league, I'm there because it's, there's like 80 guys and it's a lot of in and out. So I do stay there for quite a little bit. Um, but you don't need another like custodian there or something yeah. like, because that's, we do, we, if we use it, we no. have to hire somebody. No. No, the only time that the town hires custodial stuff would be for voting day, our festival weekend, and anything that's open off off that way. I guess that they do um, rent a custodian. Yeah, yeah. But no, we do. But we're the weekend, but we're also yeah. We're, so we're Saturday. We have, we don't have a custodian Saturday. We do our own cleaning, mm -hmm. and Monday through Friday we're done before the custodian also is done for the day. So. Um, Our leagues, we have no issues. You know, parents like to, we can usually talk a parent into helping out with any of the leagues. Um, I don't have, we don't have any issues. So 
Carroll is pretty good at getting coaches. Um, special events, eh, that's, that's become a lot more difficult. I, I just feel like fa parents, families are just so stretched, just stretched so thin now with all of the commitments. I mean, you guys are here, you know, um, it's one more thing. So we don't rely as much on uh, volunteers. We do try to recruit high school kids because they need it for their community service, but I will tell you, it is really hard until they really need it and they <laughs> don't care. Yeah. So um, I used to do criminal um, volunteers. I don't do that as much anymore, unless it's a favor for the community, but I, I tend to stay away now. So. But well, I will say volunteers have become. But it's all across the board. You know, we just had a, there was just a Facebook post looking for um, PTO volunteers. It just, everybody's fading out. It makes it harder and harder, you know, to get programs going. So. You don't need a criminal record check to be an employee or a volunteer. I do. I, I, Even though you use criminals? Uh, if it's a if it's um, a criminal, I shouldn't say criminal. If it's a kid that needs to work off community service through oh, the oh, judicial oh, system, oh, 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 okay. that would be supervised by TV. Because that's mm -hmm. like Dover uh, has their um, inmates yeah. doing community yeah. service, like painting the fire oh, stations yes, and those yes, kind of things. Yeah. No, I've Which never been requested any children. of those things. No, yeah. no, I haven't ever been requested those. We've we've had. Um, different uh, submarine uh, ships come in, uh, yep. US whatever, who wanted to do a volunteer project. We've had two of those come in. Um, but other than that, I do, but I still run volunteers and all my uh, mm -hmm. background checks and all my volunteers. Yeah, you still have to yeah. do that. Yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah. yeah. And I think I told you, did I tell you about like even getting them through um, their coaches certificate through a program? Did I give you that no, information? you didn't tell me Yeah, that. I'll send you that because yeah. that's a really big help and that actually helps them get certified and um, as well. So, Ooh, yeah. And that's just an easy, an easy thing. But I can send you that. And what is that? It's called NISCA. So it's um, National Youth Sports so Coaching Association. So it's just a online quick training, you know, for coaches to volunteer. It's just to see. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is it more about coaching techniques or more about how to handle children? A little bit both. Because that would be good for the director and the yeah. assistant director yeah. or something like that. You know, yeah. what a process. Take that. Mm -hmm. Yep. A little bit of both. And we, you know, and certainly now, because we do a coach's training right before each season, so we might partner with a high school coach. So. Um, soccer like Chelsea will come down and run something for us, a basketball thing they might come down and run something for us. So just so we're not they're not all the coaches aren't always looking at our face or my program coordinator's face, mm -hmm. you know, you might ask someone else to come down. So students are too that we have that yeah. training for some of you so a lot of other people do that. A lot of other programs anyway. So for you, do you do I have a question about like the roles, do you do all of like the financial grant writing and um, overview of the staff and the volunteers, <laughs> and then the people under you are just yeah. execute the programs? <coughs> I'm the boring part. Yeah, I used to do fun stuff. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so now I sit behind a desk mostly and um, don't write as many grants as I should. That's a that's a downfall of mine. I'm not that great at it nor do I enjoy doing it. Um, same with finances, not my favorite. Um, so budget stuff, overseeing things, compliance, you know, the safety things, all of those things, the brochure that goes out, you know, this new software, things like that. And then the summer, it's just me in the office. So then it's, I do a lot of the billing with this new software. I'll do more of the billing and things this summer. So yeah, so my stuff is boring. I don't find or it boring at all. Or dealing with, you know, <laughs> the stuff that no one wants to deal with, your parents and all of those things. So the schmoozing that makes you cringe. <laughs> so, um, so when you do registration, do you do it online or do you do it in person? But, and what do you use for your online uh, So right currently we are using what's called active. Um, I hate it. So don't even write okay. it down. Yep. All right. <laughs> um, most people love it though. So and it's it's been good for us for the last few years. But I need more of a financial based software. Um, Excel helps, and my finance director is amazing. But 
the budget committee wants more and more of me to explain things, and the software does not help me with that. So, um, yeah, so which is tough. So this new software that will go live April 1st of this year is called MyRec.com. My, my what? MyRec, R-E-C, all one word. And it's amazing, um, and I'll be able to, we also run, have rentals, so people will be able to do rental requests through it as well. Um, do you have, is it um, a store too? So is I send you a store. T-shirts? Yeah. Do you want to do concession? Yeah. Or, you know, I can add all of those modules. I'm not sure, I won't this year. Yeah. Um, until I'm familiar with the software, but I think we might put a store around there. Mm. Um, That's some point. So, mm. yeah, I bought all the cheesy things like that that parents always forget about. What would be the like? Uh, it's revenue based, so I took an average of the last three years at three twenty five, and so my charge for this year is forty one hundred dollars. Do you put that back on that? It, and I'm that's sorry. a budget request. Oh, it, it's a budget, but you don't put it back on your yeah. uh, consent. No, that's going to be that's an appropriate. So do they do they go in and register online, or do you register them all? Nope, they can go online, or people like our senior citizens still aren't. Don't, they still yeah. like the face-to-face, -face, yeah. um, and they like to pay the cash or check, so they still come in and see us. Um, but we get a lot of parents who just prefer to sit behind the computer and pay for an entire summer with a credit card. Um, and they will be able to do it in-house now too, which we weren't we weren't able to do with that software. Yeah. So um, if they want to come in, we'll have a swipe to be able to do that now too. So oh, okay. something we can't get right. It sounds like a nice credit card bring help here. Yeah. Not now. No. But we were using Sports and English, right? Do you even want to be the key with people who are registered? Really? It was by, by person, right? right. So I had and two by transaction. transaction. Oh, really? So, so it was huge. Oh, wow. If you registered, like, um, I did. Yeah, yeah, every child was a transaction. <laughs> and, like, if you registered them by the week, every week was another transaction. Okay. So if you registered five kids for two weeks, that's ten transactions. Really? And then if you did before care and after care, that was another transaction. Whether you paid on credit card or not? Right. Or get, oh, wow. Oh, okay. Well, you, this was, was all, all credit card. Credit card. Yeah, oh, yeah, it was all credit card. But I mean, you were still getting hit every single one, even though you were using a credit card. Right. Yeah, right. and yeah. it was 2% oh, yeah. for everyone. So That's you were, like, I registered my one child yeah. for, I think, three weeks, one per month, yeah. like June, July, and August. And it was just one child. And I got hit with six transaction fees. And I didn't do before and after care, but it would have been 12, it would have been three more if I had done before or after care. I'm trying to remember what fees we did last year. It was. I remember last year. Uh, actually, I didn't pay, I ended up giving, I ended up giving up my check. Check, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 that was. Yeah. 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 I think. And they did not have a good accounting reporting. Yeah, yeah, and that's um, what, that's going to be the big thing for yeah. us. Yeah, and I think active. So the current software does not do that, thankfully. But they do charge for credit card. Mm -hmm. um, so if a customer does eat the credit card, mm -hmm. uh, but they don't just for coming in and we register online. Mm -hmm. There's no fee that way. So, so and I'm not sure how I'm going to do our next one. Um, whether we're going to have the cost of the program to eat the credit card or or we eat it ourselves. I haven't decided that yet. So. On this one here? Yeah, the new one. Yeah. Okay. So um, so did you that forty one hundred for the year? Yeah. Think? yeah. Yeah. So it comes out to three hundred a month, I think. Yeah. So um, credit cards are accepted and when they do when the participant does it, they eat the cost? Yeah. Currently. Yep. Yeah. And you know, it's they funny, we, we never really got any complaints about, I was the one that was complaining about it more than the parents were, about the transaction fees. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah. why are you hitting them every single time they're doing that? But yeah. the parents didn't really seem oh, to right, mind. No. I think it's because it would, they were, they could do it on credit yeah, card. Right. And for them, it was probably it was worth it. And worth we're cheap. It. Yeah. And we're cheap, too. Yeah. Yeah. We have not very expensive right. Right. Yeah. program, so it wasn't, it was probably yeah. even worth it. Well, they're, I'm talking to them Monday, but they're willing to work with me on Fourteen yeah, on fees. So we'll okay. See. Yeah, but it's more about the reporting too. Right? Well, more on that later. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I found out all sorts of stuff. Well, that's great. Yeah. That's so exciting. <laughs> what do we do? Yeah. Any more questions for Miss Carter? Yeah. Oh, do you have to fill in when, say, um, whoever's running the summer camp is gone? Have that come up yet, actually? Have we? My staff has never 
ever sick. Yeah, like, isn't that it's weird? amazing. I know. Um, yes, it would be I one of those situations that. where I would most likely have to fill in, and that's never happened, and it will probably happen really? this year. Really? Because you just you did. I did. It. Exactly. Yeah, you did. It. <laughs> um, but most of the time, for our kids' play program, most of the time we're good with ratios anyway. We can take 1 to 13, but we can go... We go one to ten, but we're good. For, we don't have to, but we can go one to thirteen. Yeah, so, yeah. if someone calls out for kids play, we're still good in our ratio. Yeah. Um, our other camp, depending on the day, we would if we travel with kids play, we would count them as staff as well. So we would still be okay. Yep. So. And now, what are your hours for your summer camp? Or your, what are you doing your summer camp. I'm gonna have to ask. It's seven. We have early in the summer, seven to nine is before, and then our camp actually runs nine to four. And then we offer aftercare until 5.30. Okay. Yeah. That's what we did at five. Well, we're 7.30. 7.30. Yeah. We used to be 7.30, and then we had a lot of requests for early drop-off, so we do do nine. Oh. We get a handful. Yeah. Yeah. Enough to make it worthwhile to keep doing it anyway. We yeah. had a lot last year. Yeah, like our numbers went up dramatically because we mm -hmm. offered the the before, yeah, before well, and after. Yeah. The before and after hours. Yes. So it didn't work out really well. Yeah. We're fine. I mean, we have parents at home, so it's not six thirty. Yeah. It's a long day for the kids. Yeah. Long day for the kids. Yeah. 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 So long. Uh, I don't have any more questions, but. I really appreciate you. Yeah, no worries. Yes. I'm sure you'll have a million more once I leave. Right. Um, <laughs> and that's completely fine. I did bring brochures yeah. that you guys can yeah. take. Yes. I didn't bring enough, so I apologize right. for that. You guys sure? can do whatever. And this is yeah. our current one, and then I can totally get you the one that's coming out, so you have a gist of program ideas, and that comes out um, April 1st. So, and this kind of lists the numbers and what we're running currently, and, but this one ends in March. Um, actually, yeah, the end of February. Now, with all of your programs, do you ever have a hard time with with filling it or? Why yeah, there's a couple programs that um, that we've kind of nixed over the years, or maybe just got stale. Most of the ones that are in here right now have booked out, though. So, oh, okay. so it's good we too. always keep one brochure that you know with numbers, and we can go back and whatever. Yeah. This brochure, you know, we have sponsors that help pay, just so you do know that. Like your hospital is a big one, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and little sponsors in here as well. Um, and I do put town stuff in the back just to be, just to keep everything streamlined. So, so but I can get you more if you guys want to pick these apart, and awesome. I will get you the next brochure as well Thank you. if you would like. So, Thank you so much. Um, what is your resident versus non-resident? I know you take non-residents. Yeah. Uh, but what is your differential in, in prices? Rate, in rate, ten dollars. And I don't really for seniors though. Is that for program or is that where is that like for your whole summer program? Yes. Yeah, so summer um, this <coughs> year is we do a flat rate for the summer because it's very it's Marshwood kids. Oh, so okay. and if it's a Marshwood program, it's a flat rate. So we do Marshwood um, camps that are run by the football coach, and I let them choose their own fees, and we do a flat rate. We don't do a resident and non. It gets too confusing because. Marshall program. Yeah. Um, same with summer camp. We used to do resident and non, and it's it's too confusing, so we just do a flat right now. Mm. Yeah. So we might make it up at the at, at another at another time frame, but um, it's a pretty good split. So we still get majority of of our kids, but yeah, you know, it's too much to figure out. I have a quick question for you about MyRec.com. Do you, are you able to be the site builder too? Can you yes. actually build what you want to build? Yeah, so which is great because they're going to build it for me first. So I'm going to, like, it'll be on on what we would like, like as a heading. And you can go on and you can actually take a tour of it too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you can, I can choose my own header and all of those things. And they're actually going to put in my entire brochure for the oh, first nice. time, which is amazing. But they're going to show me how to do it. Yeah. So, and then I can add modules if I want, I have forms that I'm going to put in, that are calendars, um, that I'll be able to do at any time. So once they do it for me for the first time, then I'm kind of, then you're on your own. I'm on my yeah. own, yeah. Um, do they, are they charging the setup fee? No. Okay. No, nope. any conversation I have, all of it is included in the, the yearly fee. So 
like an email on the main half a day or a phone call on the morning time, so it's no extra charge. I'm gonna look at it. I may have even looked at them, but I'm gonna I'll take a look at it tonight. Yeah, there are, so they've been, I, again, I did a lot of, there was another one called Rec One. Um, they were pretty decent too. Um, I don't know, but something about my rec stood out. Yeah, I, I don't, I think it was more, maybe because we could still do our own thing to go with it, but it was the rental fees I needed and the finance piece was huge for me. Mm -hmm. That was the that was the big piece. Yeah. I needed there are to, some really, really good ones out there. They're just so expensive. They are expensive. Yeah. Incredibly. But they're beautiful though. Yeah. There's some programs out yeah. there that, oh wow, I was like, I can't wait to get a demo and I get a demo and they'd be like, oh, it's gonna be eight, ten thousand dollars. I'm like, I can't. Well and the good thing with this is it's that. a website too, so I can get rid of my website so I'll save some more on oh, that side of it too, because it'll be a website and registration all in one. So which will be nice. Good. Now, yeah, your two, uh, your two assistants, are they salaried or hourly? Hourly. And do they do anything over 40 hours? How does that work? They give us time. So they give us time. Yeah. Is that time they have, or yeah. do you do it for 24? Yep. So, um, yep, holidays, um, yeah. So they'll get, like, summertime especially, they'll go, they, there are times where they will go 45, 45 hours, maybe more. We have a camping trip, so our program coordinator could get 50 hours, so it's over. You know, with my schedule, I still work the same, basically the same amount of hours. It's nice because in the because I work Sundays in the spring, I get out early on Fridays. Mm -hmm. So my husband gets out early, so it kind of works yeah. well. So, um, but my husband was he was always in the salary, but now he's so squeezed. Your health insurance comes from the town. Mm -hmm. Does the liability insurance is that covered by the town too? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yep, we have one big um, MMA, like main municipal cover division. Yeah. Do you program. receive anything from the state, like your state income tax? Do you receive any funding from them? No, no. However, we have a lot of, which I'm sure I'm sure you guys do in the summer, um, state funded kiddos. So we have people fill out applications for them, things like that. But so we'll get, we might get weekly checks from the state for kids, but other than that, that's it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I remember. Talked a little bit about hiring or starting like a part time rec director. Oh, yeah. And then I think your advice to us was what, what, what would be a good hourly yeah. rate? Or did I ever give you that information? I think, I think you did. I think you said, you, I think you told me something around 22 an hour. Yeah. Is that and I did I ever email you? There's a big so. payment, there's a pay compensation that was just done by main rec directors. Oh. So I can get, and that includes like program coordinators and things like that. It gives it a Give you a good baseline. Ooh, that would be great. So I can email yes, that thank to you. you. Which would be great. And that was just done last year, so it's pretty accurate. Oh, good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I just heard too that the main um, minimum wage is going up again. Is that true? To 11? It is yeah. 11 now. Yeah, what well, is 11 now? I do. I still have it at home, but you know, I'm gonna have you write it um, at work. I'm gonna so the other thing was, was just kind of interesting. I went to I was at the Kenny Bunk. Um, if anybody needs a job, Kenny Bunk rest stop at like six six o'clock on I think after one of the games or something, and half the stuff was shut down. And I was like, where is everybody? And it's six o'clock. And the guy says, we can't get anybody to work here. He said nobody wants to work for eleven dollars an hour. Oh, wow. Well, I'll tell you, that is our biggest <laughs> issue right now is finding employees in the That's summertime. Important. And we are we need more for our before and after school program. And um, we just had an amazing person apply and come in. We were ready to hire her on the spot until she heard of that. So we were starting that. Obviously, there's you know room for advancement, but mm -hmm. everybody wants the, the money now. So mm -hmm. What were you offering? 11. 11, yeah. yeah. But you know, once you know backgrounds and things and three months probation or whatever right. I choose to do or done, there's always room for advancement. I mean, but you can go to Dairy Queen and work for fifteen dollars an hour. I think right now. So. Oh my God! Really? So yeah. you give eleven dollars an hour is for your kind of position is that? Yeah, for yeah for yeah, um, counselor. Correct. Counselor. Okay. Yeah. And then what do you pay uh, for your like your assistant directors or your director? So you're, the, you're not the, uh, not you. You're you're the over everyone. Yep. But your next level. Yep. So it would be me as director, and then I have my program coordinator, and he's at um, what is he at right now? 18, 18 and change, mm -hmm. and he's the one that gets split. Yeah, right? yep, he's the one that gets 
split with York Hospital. Okay. And then I have my kids' play director, who also doubles as my office assistant. Okay. And she's um, at 19 and change, I believe, right now. Mm -hmm. So that was the kids' play director? Correct. But they're 52 weeks a year? Yes. Okay, yes. so that's a little yep. different. And they got an increase last year because the town did a compensation study. Um, and I've been <coughs> trying to get them in for more. I'd like to get them even more than that because they do a lot more than they should have to time. One of them was there longer. Is that why they're getting more? Or is it just a different At the time, it was right. At the time, it was okay. longer. Yep. And the kids' play has been there two years longer. Okay. volunteer that you said would help me um, possibly. Oh, he doesn't even, he's not even showing up to any of the meetings. Has he been invited though? I mean, I don't know. Oh, he has. But as I said, we have to, because um, you got, um, well, who 
whoever's been on the committee got something from Caroline asking if you want to be part of next year or this year going forward. So we, we're doing that right now. So we would have to respond. Oh, we have to. Uh, John. Uh, David Jen. Yes. Yes. So we just kind of need to double check to make sure if he wants to, and then we can get that name to uh, Caroline. Um, Um, so, Laura, we already we already got your reply message about the principal. Mm -hmm. Did yeah. you send that to everybody? Oh, I didn't get it. I thought I did. Ooh, whoops. Well, anyway, I know I got it. <laughs> so, so maybe that's what Kathy replied to, because I didn't get that either. He is very on board with Rec Day Year. He says any building he's ever worked in, Rec has been in. He has no concerns. I did say, but he has no concerns <laughs> about it. Um, Dick, the custodian. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the only issue he sees is the budget passes, the gym floor is going to be resurfaced, not just sanded and the whole polish the whole is going to be. Yeah. Um, and that's up to whether, when you can get somebody to do it. Um, he said that if it's later in August, you know, before school starts, then Rec can have the gym the whole time. If it's done earlier, he doesn't want Rec on the gym after it's resurfaced. I mean, after, like, at all? Mm -hmm. Well, just because it, it has to dry, 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 you know. It, yeah, it's not just, you, you can't do mm -hmm. a lot on there. So um, yeah. that was his only concern. He has no problem um, sharing a bob with someone, um, you know, giving somebody a bob to get in and out, although there's usually custodial staff there anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but he does not have a problem with that. Um, I talked a little bit to Janny because she does the custodial stuff. And her feeling was, and I have not had a chance to talk to Rich about this, but he's, he's concerned, he knows who needs to be in the classroom. He's concerned about the classroom because the technology is in every room and moving out, moving in, you know, the teachers and whatever. Um, but when I talked to Janie about it this morning, she felt it was great when we were in kindergarten. Uh, one, one of the years that I worked with a student, they were in kindergarten. And they moved the refrigerator from the staff room into kindergarten. So they had that whole space. And they set it up so that they had like their snacks and the refrigerator here, and then the kids had tables and stuff set up to play on that side. Um, also now, the smart board is on the end wall, so it would be easier to put something, or paste something in front, in front of, front of yeah. that than when they redid the last time it was in the middle of the wall. But it's over at the end now. Um, and there's bathrooms in there. Right. So you're self-contained. So um, the only thing would be going to the gym, but it, and she said everyone was wonderful last year when they had stuff in the hall. Mm -hmm. But even that way, if it's not pouring out, they could go out. That's like they didn't go out there and go into the gym. And go into yeah. the gym. And they could still use those bathrooms yeah. you know, when they're in the gym. Mm -hmm. So I will mention that to Rich. Mm -hmm. And um, I see him tomorrow. I have to meet with him about students. So when I see him for that, I will mention that to him. But Bob, um, she just said for her as working there, it was the best place because they just moved everything out of that room, mm -hmm. and it was all contained in there. Yeah. And oh, there's a good, and they have the safe sink. They have, you yeah, know, they, two sinks. And there's a, a ton of uh, where they can do things, but of course, things not just in the bathroom, but on the side. Right? There's, yeah, there's two yeah. sinks outside so the bathroom. It's a perfect room for that to happen. And really, it was out the side door. And it was just convenient, even when it was raining and you had to be inside. And the year that I was there was the year that they were doing the abatement on the other side of the building, so half of the gym was built with the classrooms, so they only, the rec only had half the gym to use. But even with that, like we were able to use the hallway next to kindergarten mm -hmm. and do something in there too mm -hmm. when it was pouring mm -hmm. out. Um, so it, in my opinion, it worked out well other than the distance from the gym. But if we go outside, and at that time the children were not always escorted. So if, you know, if this group was going to the gym, then they would be with that person going to the gym, and I think that would be fine. And you would really only use the gym on any time of the weather, right? I mean, you, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, if you well, they did sometimes outdoors. they did like knockout and like some of that stuff. Yeah, they stayed in sometimes to get out of the 
sun. You know, the, the sun, sun. Yeah. 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 You know, sometimes uh, you're in there and it was too, too hot. But kindergarten was nice. And you guys don't have all the stuff they used to have, right? Like the... I remember they used to like have air hockey yes. and, all that, and all that kind of stuff. Yes. I, I don't know. I don't... Like, did no, I don't know. Get rid of those. Actually. I worked that year when they did um, with a student and that, that he's in high school now. So it was quite a while ago. Because I think he was in second or third grade when I worked with him. And um, the ping pong tables stayed together then. Mm. Yeah. So I, I have a feeling we're it is like, that mm. stuff. Yeah, I, I think we threw, threw all away. away. Yeah, all that stuff. Um, so I think he, they, that would make the kindergarten better. Mm -hmm. Like if you wanted to do sport games or mm -hmm. whatever, the uh, craft. Well, or my two youngest were in there. Um, um, where the camp they were using that room. They used it a couple of years. Yeah, yeah I thought it was good because mm -hmm. it had all the games in the corner. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Like you said, the bathrooms. And mm -hmm. then there was a hallway to be able to put all their stuff out there. Mm -hmm. um, the hallway that went out to the and back. And the sink mm -hmm. yeah. and the refrigerator. Yeah. And I thought it actually worked out really well. Yeah. yeah. So I will I'll mention that to Rich. Mm -hmm. uh, as um, I believe kindergarten was going to be last year, so I don't think that any an issue. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any painting set painting set that I've heard of scheduled for this year. Um, the only thing is the change. Yeah. And that's Boards. a big job and that's a long yeah. job. And it's going to be smothered. Yeah. It would be really nice if they could do that like toward the end. Yeah. Well, that's he's, hoping, he's hoping like second week of August. Yeah, because he doesn't want to have his staff walking back and forth across that no. person. Does has, I mean, it, it, uh, it would be great if it could be, but you kind of have their mercy.
didn't know the answers to. So, um, so if some I didn't fix. And then was it was um, that person's um, hourly? Uh, was it from seven to five? Um, it sort of depended on the day. I thought it was forty <laughs> hours per week. Forty it's hours. It's forty hours. Yeah. But when I say that, I just mean that they, their schedule is different depending on the day. Like if they could come in at seven thirty, or they could come in at what is our open to close again? Is it seven? Seven thirty. Seven thirty to six. No. Five thirty. Five thirty. Seven thirty to five thirty. But this, yeah, so this particular okay. job would be a three hour a week job. Okay. Yeah. Um, so then I just, um, also, I can't see it as cold as it is on my computer, but I tried to leave it cold of what I changed. Um, but um, what we can do is if you want, you can, you can review them um, and then get back to me. Um, one of the things that was um, not mentioned is age, and I, you know, to be a director, I would like to see someone over 21, 21 mm -hmm. or older. Um, if you want to keep higher than that, I mean, I'm not a, a cook, but I certainly didn't want it any lower than that. Um, and again, if they were in some kind of college related, that was um, yeah. something. Um, <clears throat> and the board of selectmen are the ones who hire and fire, even though they you are the ones that are reviewing, so the application should go to the Board of Selectmen, which you all would review and make the recommendations to us. I would assume that's how that works. Um, so, I mean, it was pretty, it's pretty basic. Like I said, if you, anything you guys want to change, I'm open to it. I just thought that things that I was looking at, it was way beyond what we, we are at this point in time. Okay. I have a question. We had a couple of these on the drive. Yeah, and so this is. That's what I was going to ask. This is where I got it from. Yeah. So yes. these were the ones that were on the drive. Were these the ones with Suzanne's comments on it? Yeah, but I didn't like the comments. <laughs> I bit them off. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I, I mean, it's just, just being a little more nitpicky about it. Yeah. I didn't agree with them. <laughs> and, um, so it doesn't make them right or wrong. That's why I'm saying I'm open to. Because um, one of the things that she was saying is that the camp director and the assistant director had almost identical job descriptions, but they would because an assistant director, I mean, your director is going to be the one who's ultimately in charge, yeah. but your assistant director has to do whatever the other one has to do in, in case that one isn't in. That, yeah. I mean, so they have to understand, they may not do it on a day to day same position, but they have to know the same position. That's how I yeah. would expect in case they have to cover in a particular time. I was just asking because I thought they were out on the drive getting on. Yep. Something else. Yes, I did do that. Yep. Um, so I um, so I pretty much left it kind of the same. Um, one of the things that we talked about though last year, um, and I think that's more in your uh, employee manual versus your job description, is about taking vacations and those yeah. kind of things. That I don't think is part of the job description. I think it's part of your manual to, to understand that camp director should not be taking time off unless it's really urgent or, or whatever. Yeah, I think sometimes it, but that is your manual, I think. I think even as part of um, interviewing, yeah, we, yeah. we would say sure that this is a yeah. you know, <laughs> vacation decision. That's what I was going to say. It's like, could it be part of like, the job offer? Yeah, yeah, but also in writing the manual in case yeah, someone yeah. just suggests that you 
told me that and I already booked this. And you know, so make sure it's in your manual as well. So that's that's part of the next thing that we have to kind of go over. Um, so what was the salary of the assistant director? I had it at eleven, but I thought it was more than that. But it's do you know remember what the assistant director is? Well, I can tell you. I mean, you go to my handy little binder. Assistant director was thirteen dollars per hour with a four three hundred dollar yeah. salary. Yeah, forty three hundred. If we were going to make that a second as well. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So thirteen dollars an hour for the assistant director. What was the second? Forty three. Uh, forty three hundred. And the counselors were by hour, right? Yeah. Yes. And were they getting eight or ten? Ten. Some of them got eleven last year. We had three. We averaged ten thirty per hour. Yeah. So there was so, as uh, during the budget. Most most, most of them made ten last year. Mm -hmm. There were three, so, I believe, that made eleven. Yeah. So you have so a like sliding average. scale that you want to have it on here. Well, we do flexibility. Ten to eleven. <laughs> well, we we have the opportunity to, as you will learn later, we may have the opportunity to, you know, I mean, eleven dollars, we might have to go because we're hearing about minimum wage staffing yeah. and getting stuff in there, and, uh, so we may have to go at eleven dollars mm -hmm. an hour. And we'll, we'll put ten to eleven in each of those four. We yeah, could we just leave it at that. ten to yeah. eleven at this yeah. point. And how many hours does it, because um, I didn't know how many hours a paid uh, counselor worked. They worked about 35. Because it was uh, 35 hours a week? Yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was 35 hours a yeah. week. Seven yeah. hours a day. We had that right. on for it. Seven hours a day. All right. But the, uh, but the other thing that we're missing out of this, Denise, yep. and I don't know if you thought about it, was the team camp director. Well, too. how are we going to? That was that, a stipend too. Yep, that was a stipend too. Yeah. But I did think about it because um, it could follow the same because it's just saying that it's a, um, a, a summer camp director, so it could pertain to both. However, the stipend would be different because so uh, maybe we need to, hours. Yeah. It's less hours. Yeah. 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 Um, but we had decided, didn't we, in the last meeting that we weren't going to have Raleigh's director having the other one report to them. Yep. So they're going to be two separate. So, ones. Be two so we could take two this directors. actually and kind of bring it down a little and have just have right. team and have yep. um, Raleigh yep. and label them that way so we're clear on which one is which. But I think it would probably be the same um, description because um, they're going to almost be equal right, except yeah. for the volume and the number of days, um, volume of kids and number of days. So, um, and what was, what was team's days? Um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, except for the week of the fourth, when it would be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Okay, just three days a week. That's what we're talking about. Okay, so and that was um, how many hours a day? Mm -hmm. I think we said eight. Yeah, last year it was based on 24 hours yeah. for the week. Yeah, 24 hours a week. Yeah. So, um, we said the stipend was 31.20. Did we say that? Did we just take the 24 hours times a, a certain rate and come up with that? We, I think we gave an extra hour in there for other things, so that's why I'm kind of going with that. All right, so Remember what was your was question? Saying? What is the stipend yeah. for team? Team. It was um, 31.20. Yep, 31.20. Okay. Yep. okay. I don't think we wrote in. Because um, right, so it's one less week, too. It so was. It was 24 weekly. hours times eight weeks. We added an extra week in. Oh, you yeah, well, um, it was 25 hours. Yeah, it was 25. Hours. Yeah. 25 at 16. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's what we did. And your count was $15 at 25. So we gave them each an hour, extra hour per week in case they would cover um, planning. Talking about um, assistant director and director, mm -hmm. one of the discussions, I don't know if you were here for it, Denise, was that for before and after care, mm -hmm. the two directors in Camp Raleigh would split. Mm -hmm. So one of them would come in 7.30 to, and work there eight hours. Mm -hmm. And then the other one would come in and stay until 5.30. Mm -hmm. 
so that they would stagger. Mm -hmm. There would be one director and how many ever counselors they needed um, to cover the ratio for that time. So if we had 24 kids and we were doing eight um, counselors to, or eight kids to one counselor, it would be the director and then two counselors would be in at 730. Okay. And then at the end, if you had 20 kids, or if you had 16 kids, mm -hmm. you would send, you would only have a director and a counselor, if that makes sense. In the system. Yeah, yeah. So what, you're, so what are you saying? You're saying that the assistant director and the director, director are splitting it, but they are both not there. At this. Both of them are not there at pre or post. They're one or the other. Okay. Yes. But one or the other needs to be there. <coughs> one or the other, the assistant or, 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 no, it would be the assistant. Okay, so, and then the counselors would just stagger their hours, so if they started early, they would leave early. Right? They would leave, if it was an hour, then they would leave an hour earlier at the end of the day to make up so that they only had eight hours of the day. Yeah. 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 So that's, that was worked out between the director and the assistant director okay. who was doing the pre that day and who was doing the post. Mm -hmm. So they weren't working 10 hour days, mm -hmm. if yeah. that makes sense. No. Yeah. Yeah. So. So I think your ask from us is to just take a good look at these. Take a good look at it. Send me some, uh, send me, um, some uh, recommendations and um, once I get, let's say, let's give it a week. Yeah. And uh, then I'll get it on the agenda for um, the select board to approve. Okay. So you want these? Any kind of revisions within a week? Revisions. Yep. Please, Denise. Say Friday of next week, so I can give them two and a half. So then I can get on the agenda for the following Monday. Okay. Because they may need another week to review it and then come back with it. So we don't want to go too long if we don't have to. Okay. Yeah. We're gonna need them. We're gonna need them. Yep. So we need revisions. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have any revisions, just send me a note saying I'm good with this. And so then when I see who everyone I've heard from and I've scheduled earlier, then I'm just gonna send it to them. Okay. Okay. Got it. So the sooner they get it, the faster they'll get it um, taken care of. Thanks, Jessica. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so the rink line are probably the department. Do we have any? I do. They said that they could find a space for it. So the okay. problem is getting one. Right. That's not the problem, storing one. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Um, I talked to um, George and said I'm sure he has some places he can put it. So nice. inside. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Exciting. Yep. Okay. Um, senior spend. I wasn't sure I understood what that meant, clarity. Um, were you, I think it was last meeting, you were asking about the $300 budget and how that worked and how, if you had funds available to you. Okay, it's right so, now. Uh, the funds will be coming available when the budget passes, from my understanding. Mm -hmm. But once that $300 is gone, it's gone. It's gone. If I, if we did a spaghetti dinner or a meal for seniors, mm -hmm. and they brought in, and they paid like three dollars for the meal, can that go towards the next another thing, or is it just that three hundred dollars and it's gone, and whatever money we bring in goes where? So can it can be redeposited and used, right? Right. And the answer is no. Because remember what um, Caroline said to your question. You have a budget, and your budget is spent. Regardless of what you bring in, you cannot use, like, uh, like I was saying with rec. If you got an you know, abundance of revenue in, you're still only allowed to spend what you put into your budget. But even though that, even though you brought in the revenue, so we can bring in money. But is it the whole rec line? Like not just the senior program? You have a you have your own line. So you have three hundred dollars that you can spend. And that's it. But it's not the whole rec line. Right? So it just I don't understand that question. 
Just to, just to ask. So let's say, let's I'll just say that you spend your three hundred dollars, right? Mm -hmm. So then we just want to work it. Let's say we're having coffee. Buy your own coffee. That that doesn't affect that line, does it? Or I didn't get like I was gonna say. Years. Let's meet. We'll have a gathering. Seniors at the Black Bean yeah, yeah. for coffee. Yeah. But it's just a gathering, so that doesn't count towards our budget or against our budget, right? So you don't spend any money, right? No. And they're responsible for buying their own coffee. Yeah. Yes. Right. 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 They yeah. Care. That is, I mean, no, it's only what you spend. Okay. So if you have a spaghetti dinner, you have to buy all this product. Like that. See, that's where I was heading with the revolving rec fund. Is if we brought it, if we had that on the agenda for this year, which I know we're not. That would allow us to charge, and that money would go back into funding another rec program, another senior program. Because any fees charged for a rec program would go into the fund to pay for another rec program or to pay for that rec program. Is, is that a clear understanding of it? No, I understand what you're told. <laughs> I can't do that. Yeah. Right. Because but, it's a, so what that's line. encouraging you to do is your budget. Yeah, that's when you gotta jack up your budget. Because if you don't spend it, you don't spend it. Right. But if you have opportunities and you have the revenue source to fund it, right. then you can spend it. Right. You know? So, so, so it's such a catch twenty two because because you know, when you present it to the town, you know, the town's like, Well, you just went from, you know, three hundred dollars to three thousand yeah. dollars. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> No, it's true. It's true. You know, I but mean, and I was one of those people before we got here. Yeah, that was yeah. like, what are we doing? But what, they, but what they're saying, you know, is that if you're collecting the funds, then you can use that to offset it. If you can collect ahead of time, and you can use it to, and not take town money, then that's the you know route. Well, we have I to understand it. Spend it. it. No. What I'm saying is, no, what I'm saying is, okay, so say you're having a fundraiser, yeah. okay, and you you got some money up front. So if you can pay your expenses versus taking town funds and pay the expenses out of the money that you've raised before you have the event, yeah. mm -hmm. I have to play this with Alan, but to me this makes sense. Then whatever is left whatever is left over you have to turn back into the town. But do you see what I'm saying? If you if you were knowing that you were gonna see you can't do that when you're gonna make the spaghetti supper because you've gotta buy the product unless you can get donations. So this is one of the conversations I had with Caroline. It's like can I can I spend that three hundred dollars at Hannaford's buying food and put on a meal? And she says if you spend that three hundred dollars at the grocery store, that's your one and only event because your money's gone. Mm -hmm. But if you go to Hannaford's and you ask for gift cards and products, you still have that three hundred dollars right. to spend on something else. Uh -huh. Right. Right. But you didn't spend this three hundred this year on your handout, did you? Oh well, this the three hundred was from twenty eighteen. I got You're it in. You're positive about that? I talked to Caroline and we got it in okay. before okay. January fourteenth. Okay. Um for so, the mailing. For the yeah. mailing. So, well I was concerned because we were really right. out of order. Yeah, okay. So, so okay. that went on the 2018. Um, it came in the week before. Mm -hmm. But my other question was, so we can't use this, we only have $300 in the budget to use for senior programming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I heard you say we have to have offsetting revenue. Now my understanding is it's offsetting revenue only for summer rec. No, it's for the rec department budget. Okay, that's a new understanding to me. No, it's always been that. It's the bottom line. Senior pro senior programming is part of the rec budget. It's just broken down. Okay, so anything to do with recreation should, if at all possible, be self funded. Okay. Because I'm thinking like family fun day. The town gives a that's donation. That's not part of that's not part of the rec budget. That is a separate one in itself because it's it's determined. But that's part of the rec budget, isn't it? Yeah, it's under the. It's under the. Uh, are you telling me senior programming is not part of the rec? Because same same fall family fund day is not part of the rec. Because I think we presented it as part of the rec. Yeah, that's my that's my understanding. 
Sam and, Sam and Paul family fun day has been in there before Red was. And that was their donation to the fireworks. Although that has a purpose. Although we did present Family Day under the rec. Because it was part of the rec. Yeah, okay. Family Day is not part of the rec because we have our own means of funding. Because we. But as far as the town is concerned. There, that is a donation, is not a reimbursement funding. Okay. And like I'm trying to figure out all of the different funds in my head mm -hmm. because I've been sorting through the different funds that are available from the state. Mm -hmm. and working them out in some sort of organized fashion or presentation for myself so I can understand it. Mm -hmm. And so I was under a different impression because when we first met with the select board a couple of years ago, they asked that summer rec be self-funded. They didn't say anything about winter rec or anything about the senior programs when I requested that a couple of years ago, the $300. I don't think senior program has been in there for two years. It went, I requested it just the year before you moved. Just last year. I thought it was just last year. Just last year. Yeah, and then last this year. year, so two years. Okay. 2018, 2019. Because you know we had that conversation too about the winter the winter rec thing because we don't pull in $1,100 for anything. Winter so. rec has always been in there, as in, um, but it's never been really. Yeah, so to say. And then when they were doing a lot of the work with the rec, uh, the ice rink, yeah. that's when it got increased because of what they had some the lines that the they had to do. Yeah. So that I don't that was not um, because they weren't just generating revenue and they knew that. Right. right. So that one is as well not generating generate it's not expected to have um, funding. Okay. So summer rec and senior programs are expected to generate revenue to offset themselves. That's my understanding. I can get it clear, clear it up. Okay, I have a question. Yep. <laughs> Just to muddy the water. Yep. <laughs> yep. So say this, we, we had the kids at the school do something for the seniors and we raise $100. Mm -hmm. So does that money, so is are we, is Celia then able to spend that money and that's not counted as the $300 or is that counted as the $300? That's a donation to the fund, uh, to the, the program, yeah. and I would say that doesn't include your $300 because it's already in hand as long as it's being used for an event within that given year. It's almost like saying PTO gave you $100 mm -hmm. to have an, an, an event, okay? If you're planning an event, they're giving you a donation for $100. Because, well, the reason I'm asking is because typically the union donates money mm -hmm. to organizations in the town, mm -hmm. like the um, Colonel Wentworth House, yep, and, yep. you know, stuff like that. And I think that might be something they would be interested in, is donating $100, $50, whatever, I don't know what they have up there. But I would say that you wouldn't do it until the event was happening, because then it's, if you were just making a donation, she would have to give it to offset the town because you don't have a purpose for it. You know, it's just a donation. Um, so if we don't, what if we donated gift cards? If we had the union purchase gift card gift cards Even to Hannaford or something, or would, would Even or would if they said if they donated with a purpose? Is that something? Well, so if she says same, same. I want I want to take the seniors or I want the seniors to go to Fogarty's today for lunch yep. with this money. Mm -hmm. So I have an answer to that question from all the research I've done. And it also applies to summer rec. So according to the state, what I have found, and maybe Caroline can give some different perspective, is that when we get a donation, it's supposed to be held in an account by the select board or the town treasurer until they get an invoice for that donation. So if we get an invoice from CNJ, one of their check comes in, that is to be held that designated amount is supposed to be held, earmarked, for t-shirts. And it's very clear in the state things that says, like, if you get a donation for uniforms, that money is kept held with the select board until um, an invoice comes in for uniforms. And then it's distributed based but on that. that's what you've been doing all along. When you get money, you're having it deposited through Caroline, and then she will write the check to the people who were supposed to get that payment, right? 
Yes. So if you get CHAs, you're depositing CHAs, check, and then you're paying the t-shirt company, yes. you're the town. So what's different? So one thing, one thing that comes to mind is last year we got three scholarships, and not all of them were used. So technically, we should have earmarked the third scholarship to go because it was a designated purpose to go into but we an earmark. Not go year to year where an operating budget that ends December 31st. We cannot hold money. That's what your revolving fund should have done. So I'm saying this is something set out by the state that says the select board is supposed to, because it's earmarked money, you cannot put it back into the general fund. So I will look it up again. And well, don't look it up because I'm going to tell you right now, she's going to say we can't carry money unless it goes into a fund that's associated to that. And that's what your revolving fund would, would have done, right? Possibly, or yeah. I, I don't know. There's no fund that exists. Not, not, at this, not at this time, but she cannot hold money out. Because Is that right, Bryn? Right. Thank you. Because there's All no right. place to put it. There's no place to put it. And so the town, if they have leftover funds every year, goes to offset taxes. That's, or goes to the fund balance or whatever. So. We can't hold money unless we have an account to put it in that's designated for some of that purpose. That's what t t all towns do that. So, oh, wait, one more time. I guess, and Suzanne had said when she was on the board, she was going to look into this. And now we have a different board. So, I am just confused because we were told one year that the money, that, that board would hold over money. But they would put the money in the general fund, and then put whatever scholarship money we had in our budget the following year. I remember that. The scholarship money would be rolled over. Right. But you you can roll, roll over, over yeah. any money. Yeah. It's, well, the problem is that that's what we were told. <laughs> well, so now I'm we're just trying to... You cannot roll over any money unless there's a fund to put it in. So, so uh, for my own peace of mind, I'm going to reread the article I found that talks about donations and how the money earmarked for donations needs to be kept by the board. Does anybody else want that information? You can send it to me, but I'm going to tell you that we don't even have that unless we have a fund. <laughs> okay. Because I don't think that we're, we're not, we're doing what we're told by the Department of Revenue and everyone else is telling us what to do. And you don't carry forward any money unless you have a fund to put it in. I understand that, but uh, uh, my brain is clearly not. <laughs> I beg to differ with you. My brain is just conflicted at the moment yeah. of, between what I've read and what I'm hearing in person. If that makes sense. You, yeah, you can say that's, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, for that sure. is to me. I will okay. definitely look at it as well and talk to Caroline about it. But it, this has always been what the town has done. It, I mean, end the year and that's that. Okay. We need to move on. Yes. Sorry. But just so I go back, Denise, you were going to check into um, confirming that um, winter rec and um, senior funding needs to be level funded, right? You said um, yeah, you were going to the yeah, yeah. confirming um, that senior, senior needs to be revenue neutral, right? I believe that. I will get that confirmed. Um, Winter rec, I, I don't know. It wasn't at one time, so I'm not sure what the expectation. I think my understanding is summer rec is definitely revenue neutral. And I have to say, and it. senior was part of this. Part, it's, it's how you ask the board, when you ask the board, how that was going to be taken care of. But that's my understanding. My understanding. I don't think that they're going to look for you to reimburse for the 300, yeah. but they certainly are going to look for reimbursement as much as possible for summer rec. Yeah. My understanding when I went to the select, the previous select board mm -hmm. to ask for the $300 is that there is no current senior program and we need something. I felt we needed to expand besides one group. But you weren't asked to reimburse on the mailing that you did. No. So that one probably is not. But again, can't, you can't keep the funds 
on anything you make over that if you do have an event. Right? I understand that. Okay. Yeah. But I don't, I'm not sure that that was actually expected to be reimbursed or self funded. Um, definitely wrecked her. Some some are wrecked. I, Absolutely. I totally get that. Yeah. I'm, I'm just I'm not sure that is. So I'm just looking for a confirmation whether it is or not supposed to be revenue neutral. And if you can yeah, just I'll ask. Just, well, I'll um, bring it up to the board. Okay. Right. Uh, we need to talk about registration. Yeah. I'm freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, I'm done. Okay, that, that's okay. The, the goal is, of course, March 1st, right? That's the goal. All right. I had so much to talk about, I actually typed everything out for you guys. But the first thing I want to give to you is this. See this? This is our project plan. This is our state organized. Keep us going. You're awesome. Project plan. But the reason why I'm handing this out to you guys is because I have dates on it. Okay. It tells us when things need to be done. When, or yeah. what needs to be done when. But specifically, I want to talk about what you'll see on here is the February column. Yeah. You'll see February 21st, because these are things that we need to sort out before we go live with registrations. So here, I'll hand these out. And please don't be intimidated or overwhelmed by these because um, some of this stuff, of course, is director driven. But I kept it on there to keep us making sure we're <coughs> thinking about it. And oh, one, 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 okay. Okay. One more. Okay. I know, I'm sorry. I had to get it all on one page the best I could. And believe me, I'm having trouble. Um, so, as far as registrations are concerned, so Heather just gave us gave me a really great place to go to. So I'll check the new software that she's using. It has to be cloud-based though, so I have to make sure what she's using is cloud-based. So I'll check that first, and then I'll have to check out what the fees are. So we'll do that second. I have to figure out the capabilities. But one thing I will tell you is, I was shocked even to say this to Kelly today, but I found out that there's more capabilities in Sports Engine than we were actually using. And what I mean by that is um, not only is there more functionality to it, but they're enhancing all the time. So they, they have like constant rollout of things that they're improving. So what I did, um, two, I think it was like two weeks ago, was I actually got onto the Sports Engine website because I'm like, I had some questions that I, want, I needed answers before I moved on to a different product. And when I looked at Sports Engine, I was like, wow, that's a really nice looking website. How come our website didn't look like that? <laughs> but it made me dive into it more. And I realized that um, uh, Sports Engine allows you be, to, to be your own site builder. So you can go in there and you can actually make your own website. You can have it any way you want to have it. Um, there's a good possibility, or there is a possibility, that we can actually go paperless this year. Completely paperless. And the reason why is because they offer the functionality to pay offline. So if somebody wanted to send an e-check, or if they wanted to do e-check, it has the capability to do that, uh, which would have eliminated uh -huh. that problem last year, uh -huh. right? As far as the financial reporting, they're enhancing their financial reporting all the time. What will not change are those separate invoices that we had to do. Remember the power pay invoices yeah. that are now separate? So is that when people switch programs or, or that? So when they make any sort of change. Um, yeah. If they make any sort of change, we may not know about it. Yeah. So it has to be done through us. Unless there's been an enhancement to that too. But that's something I've got on my list to ask. Um, so number one, we can go paperless. Um, the only thing we would have to do is intervene as far as accounting is concerned. But if I took a look at all the time that I put into paper registrations and chasing down money and having to chase down money, <laughs> I'm sorry, but the administrative chase down money is a lot better than it is having to type in all that stuff and keep track of it that way. So what about um, families that don't have computer access? I know when I dropped off the flyers in Summersworth, they said only about half of their kids have um, email, so they requested that I drop off paper flyers yep. to go home with all of the kids because only 50 percent, between 40 and 60, depending on the school, get email blasts from the school. The rest don't, either don't have access to it or they've not supplied it to the school. So I'm thinking about like those parents who may not have access to do it online. 
Yeah, we can still do paper registrations. I am not going to encourage it. In fact, I'm going to discourage it. Um, but for the people that don't have the capability to do that, we can certainly offer it anywhere you drop off packets to the school or, or get them to them somehow. Um, I don't mind doing that. I'm just going to not encourage it. You know, it's just going to take my patience away from a lot of work. Um, so that's what I wanted to mention about school training. So what I will do is I have a call with them Monday again, and it's to talk about some of the fees that are associated. Last year they told us they were going to drop some of the fees, so I'm going to make sure I hold them to their word about dropping the fees. I don't know with all these new fancy capabilities they have if they're going to charge me more money for something, but we already paid for the setup fee, so that should not even be an option. That was last year. That was a one-time fee. Okay, that's good. Um, so... I will ask them about that, as well as a whole bunch of other functionality <coughs> questions. That was only a couple hundred dollars, right, Dean? It's uh, 250 yeah. No, no, 200 So, So does that mean this year we won't incur any fee for using them? That was my question. Yeah. Because they sort of skirted around that issue. Um, they're being very nice. Yeah. They want to have us back. Okay. Um, so I'll see what I can do to get us, get us in there without getting charged extra fees. If we can't... if if I can get what I want out of it, I will suck up the fact that I may have to do a little extra financial accounting again. That's that's okay. I can deal with it as long as we get all this other stuff with it. I mean, their website was beautiful. Yeah. I mean, you can uh, the, the way they've changed it is, is so much better, and it's an actual like website. And then you can you can even have like loans for rec, and then have team, and then have Camp Raleigh, and I think they actually speak to each other. I need to find that out too. Yeah. But speaking to each other would be great. Right. Because you could separate them up separately. You pay for it all in the end, yeah. but you keep your registration separate. Because what I found is when I printed all that information from Sports Engine, it was, oh my God, I mean, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> There's so much there. And why do I have to keep putting in my information about my kids? Why do I have to keep doing that? So there's just a lot that I'm like, this has to be yeah. defined. It, it took a very long time. But if we can I stay with them, I say let's stay with them. <laughs> <laughs> I had to put my address. I think I had to put my address in for every single trip. You stuff, should not that. have to do that. Yeah. So yeah. I'll I'll look into that. Um, I'll probably have more information Monday or Tuesday for you guys. But for now, I'm thinking they're probably a pretty good option, and we're not giving the parents something and then changing it again this year. I mean, if we stay with them two years and decide to go somewhere else the third year, fine. But for the sake of continuity, maybe. Lean yeah. more towards sports engine as long as they can make it easier for us to do that. Yeah. So um, there was that. But I had, in the spirit of registration, we need to figure out some things here. Um, so the first one there is this, that's what I'm working on, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, determine how to register, that's me, anyways. Um, Payments. So we want to, um, we still want to offer the installment plan, but we also want them to the full price that day, right? So yes. last year we had registration closes June 15th. Let's see. So if camp starts June 24th, when do you want registration to? June 24th. Last year, so we had it closed 10 days before camp started. Do you want to close the 14th? What did we What did we think about that? Uh, how How did you feel that worked? I mean, you you pretty much did most of the registration stuff, so. You know, was that a, a good time frame between closing registration? And did we feel like we had people who, you know, was that enough time to hire a counselor if we needed to? I mean, I think that was the major problem, right? That we had 100 kids come in and we were like, oh, okay, we, we need another counselor. Um, so is that, is that enough time to make sure we have staffing? Mm, that's a good point. I think. Done. Yeah, 
Yeah, the fourth one was the last day of school so far. So that's just not even for the best grandma. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we can, we can do what we did. We, ha we did have some last minute registrations. I'm not sure how many we had, though. I, I don't think we had a lot last minute. If you're honest, encouraging to have taking them because you knew that they're going to, mm -hmm. you know, in the class they were going to try to close with the day. And but, you know, you kind of work into that. I mean, everybody, I mean, I was guilty of it, I think. Deadlines like the 14th, unless you're really worried about, oh my god, my kids aren't going to get in. Mm -hmm. People are waiting till the 14th mm -hmm. to pay money, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. to do so, do we want to? Do we want to give ourselves two weeks time? We want to say June 10th. That'll be two weeks before camp. I don't know if it's in our best interest to wait or to. <laughs> I think it's a start date of camp. 24th. Yeah, 24th. And then if you get late registrations, they're going to come in that week, especially if they're at school. Mm -hmm. They'll come in that week, and then we can get them from the school. And if our numbers are low, we can extend the date. We can say, we've decided to open it a couple more days to see if anybody needs the opportunity. Is that what they did last year, too? I don't know if we extended it. Did we extend it last year? Not last year, but two so. years ago we did. That's when we first started. So I just we're remember uh, about that. we had Sports Engine the other day, and the homepage came up for us. And I think it was closed. They shut it down. Um, I think it was the 18th. I think we extended to the 18th. You, you just said something that it's like we can go in and pick them up. But aren't we talking about not doing manual? Yeah. Well, we're talking. also talking about the people who absolutely don't have access to the internet, to the internet, too. Again, we're <laughs> yeah, more no, discouraging that. Well, no, but I mean, you do want to make sure to try to get on as much as possible from the electronic, but mm -hmm. how, how many of you did you have at school that I wish I wish we knew. What do you mean, in terms of paper? Yeah. I mean, we had like 20. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. We were between 18 and 20, which is enough considering mm -hmm. all the information you asked mm -hmm. for. So I'd say, say the 10th, and then we need to extend it. But that's just for <coughs> this camp, right? Because we extended team camp until yeah, yeah, because we until we I don't know if we ever even shut that down because that was a weekly that was a weekly sign up and we were short people too. I mean I think I think ultimately we wanna we wanna have a deadline, but you know, if 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 we're needing more people we well, we can always see though. Know, you've had your numbers to be when you only going to have the one assistant and the, and the director, right? Versus Raleigh, you're going to have as many as you can get. Right. Which means you have to hire more counselors if we get more students. Right. Right. And the other thing is, is if we have a low week, week with team camp, the, and a heavy week with Camp Raleigh, that counselor might be able to slide over there and be extra help. True. But, what you could do is you could leave it open longer, but once you have your number, right. that then it stops. Right, right, then right. it stops. Well, even well, if we they can, had another we week can, out there, we could do that anyway, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah, they were full. Yeah, and yeah. full. You know, but you know what your number's going to be based on right. what you have for staff right now. Right. And if you want to extend it longer, you can as long as you have an opening. Right. And then once it is, or upon availability, right. you can put some note in there. You know, and then when you have it, that's it. So you want to think of the fifteen too on the tenth and just. Play it by ear, see how it goes, or what do you want to do? I don't know, what do you think? I, I think that we need to open the tent. Yeah. For both. Yeah. And then do what we did last year, we just play it by ear. Right. If we need to. Right. Even if it's, even if we know we're getting last minute and we can just keep it open for folks to use, and we can do that. Yeah. But I think we no, just, I think that's good. Thing. I think two weeks. I think it would somehow encourage people to just, and that's what I kind of liked about the installment plan, is it actually encouraged people to to do it sooner than later. Right. Right? So you're closing on 619 for both camps? 610. 610 for both camps. Yep. Um, yeah. And then um, and we can discuss that at a yeah. later date if yeah. needed to. Yeah. So 
Raleigh starts on the 24th. When does he? The same for same day. Oh, okay. So, but they end earlier. Yes. They end a week early. Okay, there's that. So I think the other thing I'm going to do too, um, besides the registration, packets are concerned. This is like it's too much information. I found a way I'm going to refine it, and then there's just too much here to make it smaller. But anyways, um, so we did that. When we want to, this one said pay, be paid in full by March 31st, but I think that was actually one of those errors that was made. When do we want to pay in full for the people who are paying? Now, we, we understand that we have installments that run a few weeks into camp. So I think the installment people are fine. We can, last year, we didn't have any issues with that. We know we got all our payments. So don't they have to pay in full by the deadline? Or, or did we do something? We did not last year do an early bird registration no. discount or anything like that. No, it, I think we did it. At, if, you're, if you're paying in full, if you're paying by check or cash or paying in full, you're not going the sports engine route or whatever. Um, we had we had the deadline of May 31st. So if you're Kelly, yeah. And <laughs> so if you're Kelly and you sign on to Sports Engine and you're saying, okay, well I've done everything on the payoff line. Okay, yeah. now I owe the town a check for a thousand dollars by yeah. June 15th. Well, you better be there. Somebody's gonna be calling you. But what's your deadline? So I know that I've got to get that thousand dollars to the town by you know, whatever date. Well, I think we can make. I, I think we can make that June tenth too, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Pay in full yeah. June tenth. Yeah. I mean, that gives you that certainly gives us two weeks to say sorry <laughs> and we didn't receive your money yet. Right. Yeah, yeah. We know that the installments are automatically taken anyway. So we right. Don't have to worry about those those right. people unless they. Don't the transaction doesn't go through for whatever reason. That didn't happen last year. We didn't yeah. bounce anything. Like no, that. we didn't have that issue no. at all. No. Um, but no. it's the people who are paying offline, right? Who want to send them a check? Those, those are the ones. Yeah. That we have to. So keep an eye. Yeah. So I, before I, the tenth. So I'm I'm pulling yeah. a report on the June ninth, saying, well, who's not paid? Yeah. Who's not come to the town and paid their check? Well, and actually, we could because the tenth isn't the tenth of Monday. Yeah. So we could actually pull that on like the eighth, right? If they're not, they hadn't come into the town, so that that would give us, you know, a couple days to, or the seventh, sorry, is the Friday, mm -hmm. to hunt some people down that, that we should know on the tenth what's missing. Right, and I think we have it in the packet already that, yeah, your child will not be able to attend camp. And if the space will be forfeited. Yeah. It's perfect.
And the third section is the chambers. And that's the very last one in the chamber section. Can't for self check in and check out. I think I think we do it the exact same way we've been doing it for the last two years. We, I mean, I, I think people are used to it. They understand the responsibility of checking in and checking out. I think it's it's great that way. I loved how we did team camp that they can check themselves in and check themselves out. That all works. We had one person right last year, Denise, that um, came to the select board, I believe, and and requested a, a younger person who lived, you know, right. a hundred right. feet away. Yeah. yeah. And and so I think if we get any requests like that, that that we just kind of follow that that yeah. plan again. That if we have somebody else, you know, whose parents live right down the street or whatever, and they are working and they need they trust their children or whatever, that they they can. Take their, their. Uh... I, I I don't think you can base it on age or anything because there's so much difference between one child who is ten and another child who is ten, yep. and responsibility and stuff. And so I, I think that for us, we have to make sure that we're covered, yep. that we're not having that problem. And I think that having parents checking each other out is the right way to go. Absolutely. It's a little different. Yep. Um, I don't think we really have that with. registrations come in um, take it off the inventory okay. that's what that was but, but as you point, point order is April 30th yeah as I read look at it yeah, yeah. Order inventory. yeah. okay yeah so that's a good date yeah. that makes sense okay so we got that um, uh, da, 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 hey, geez. I know I've got so much to ask but um, so for me part of the registration process as a parent is knowing having a good idea of what you're signing up for, what you're going to be signing up for, right? I mean, so we know we want to try and get ahead of what are the activities? Um, what, what does it kind of look like, right? I know, I, I know, so we got a lot here. <laughs> here, okay, here's what I did, I, and I'm passing these out again because it's just informational purposes. So if you look at the, the graph, I kind of, I took a stab at what I kind of was thinking might be a good idea for us. Um, and again, you know, it's not something we're deciding tonight, I don't think, but 
just quickly, I, I was thinking about um, bringing back theme week, because I know we tried to do it last year, and for whatever reason it fell off the radar. But what I did was I picked up Tri-City um, Christian's um, summer camp um, program, and these are some of the things that they had for a theme, and I just threw them on it because I thought they were kind of cute and fun or whatever. Um, as far as field trips are concerned, um, so in talking with Lori, we know that the reading program is Tuesday, Wednesday, I Thursday. Believe. I will double check. I'll okay. email Pam McDonald and see, but as far as I know, that's what it is. Okay. So we would go with Monday and Friday again. So we know that the pool option, every Friday is not going to steal. Everybody loves the pool option. So we continue doing that. I think with um, the field trips first, or the uh, bringing back the off-campus activity was something that the parents surveyed about, and they really want to do that again. So I think we incorporate that with a stay back option. Um, so maybe do the park. So we would, let me see, week one. Week one, I think we agreed that we weren't going to do an off-campus field trip unless it was the pool. So we stay with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that worked out well last year. I think that was good not to have a... Right. So then we pick it up on week two. Now, week two is a short week. It's Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So I, at first, had put an off-campus activity. Then I was thinking, I don't know if I should do that or start with the state park that week because the volume will be low because our kids are really not here. So do we start with a off-campus or do we start with a state park? Give me your thoughts. I'll start with the state park. Sure. I will tell you from what we did last year for Hilltop, we only took what, 10, 12 kids last year and we did it as a birthday party, mm -hmm. which base rate was eight, eight kids something and we had to pay for extra yeah. and it ended up being $350. You're going to have a hundred dollar deposit mm -hmm. but their prices range. Well I said Hilltop but I was just kind of throwing something in there yeah. just for the sake of putting an idea out there. We don't necessarily have to do that. No. Just remember that they were a very very late um, billing. And it was like November or December that we got the bill. Yes, and something we, went wrong. Were, we were supposed to put down a hundred dollar deposit, which was never received by them. And supposedly got it lost by the wrong person. Right. Yeah. So, so we just have I mean, we just have to make sure whoever's doing it is on top of that. So I have a, I have a question about week two. Do mm -hmm. we want a pool? Do we want to find out if we can since we won't be having camp on Friday that week, do we want to find out from the school director if uh, a pool day could be Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday of that week? Well, it could be a Tuesday or Wednesday because of the reading. Maybe I well, I don't believe we start until after the 4th of July. Oh, I didn't know that. I've checked that as well, but we typically we do not. We don't, yeah. We really I think the one thing I did want to do was start the parents out with two weeks in a row for school. Because <laughs> then we're back to the same. Because my, my worry is that they're like, okay, we're two weeks in, we've they've not done the, the off campus or done any field trip sort of thing. But if you guys think differently, that's perfectly fine. So please challenge me. No, that. that's fine. I like the idea of going to the pool the first week, and then so I think that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday should be something. Even even uh, a state park might be good that week too. What about White Lake? I mean, that's pretty <coughs> far away, but it's got a playground from what I've, I've never been there before. It does have a playground. It has a playground, and it has a beach, and it has a snack bar. Mm -hmm. And even if it's a low attendance week, it was something that the kids really liked. Mm -hmm. the, um, kids okay. And it's a long trip, so it, it'll take up a big chunk of bus money, but it'll also take up a big chunk of the day. Okay. And we probably only need one bus that week. But the only concern is, like, um, that's going to be a week of um, family vacation. And so White Lake might be really crowded mm -hmm. like for campus for that. With 4th of July being on Thursday, people are probably going to go for that whole week. I don't know. I thought that maybe traffic and so on. Oh, that's a really good point. Well, how did we have to do, how did we, uh, last year we have 
you, what you have to do with those trips to you have to contact somebody at White Lake. So I, I don't know how they, um, you know. They will close the lake. Yeah. They they only, so they, they might not. They have their campers right. and they would have whoever they had scheduled and then nobody else is getting in. Right. So that's a really good point. But she said a really good point about traffic. Yeah. You want to go up on a Wednesday, which is the travel day for the week of the fourth. Yeah. End of the fourth. Unless you do it Monday. Monday. Unless you do, yeah. But and still, it's, it's a very, very popular week of vacation. And if we can get the passes sooner rather than later, then we could book it now. Or we could book it as soon as the park's open. Mm -hmm. I don't think yeah, the yeah, park's open yet. Maybe another campground, or another state park that's not a campground. Yeah, that's good true. Point, good yeah. point. So let's like the pack away. Alicoya. Oh, no, that's uh, a campground too. Yeah. What about Alicoya? That's a campground. That's a campground. That's true. Yeah. Okay. A camper campground. So let's just say that we'll we'll find a um, we'll find a beach or park that doesn't have a campground association. We'll we'll go there. But we'll, we'll, that's that's not my yeah. campground, so I just said that one. Mm -hmm. I think that would be a good one. That's the beach yeah. park. Yeah. 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 Okay. Land? Oh, I know. I don't know. Well, so let's just we'll we'll table that and just know that we want to do a state park, but we'll figure out which one it's going to be. Um, so I'll just flip flop these. Um, so okay, so we'll start out with that. So I'll just flip these all around, and I'll give it back to you guys. But um, I did call. I know I have Olympic week here, but I did call a Bolorama like Tuesday. I tried to get the Institute of Reed. And the guy there is willing to give me a, a package deal on that too. And he, they actually sent us a letter last year that I got from them um, through the town. So Bolorama um, is seven dollars per. It came to the teen camp, so it was seven dollars per person for the base, which was like two games and a bowling and stuff. And then the food and drinks special started at three dollars per person. Okay. Um, I have my thing here somewhere. So I don't know if that's changed from last year, but they did send us a letter about it. Okay, well, we can compare. Um, so I think my question next to you guys would be, I would love, I think in an ideal world, world I would love to be able to um, have these paid for all up front, too. Um, but I, I don't know if I could do that as part of the March 1st registration rule. Well, so here's my question to you. So we have always, in the past, we have included with <coughs> money for the full summer, the state park and the swimming. Yep. So if we're going to do something like the Volarama, that needs to be a, a separate charge, I would assume, right? Oh, yeah, that's the, saying, right? that, oh yeah, that's the, um, the off-campus activity that the, off, the parents are willing to pay for. Pay for. Yeah. So okay. That's so how, how do we want to handle that like yeah. is that a, a collection going to be the week before you know and I then we're talking about to, cash now i think again <laughs> in an ideal world we would have had all this settled by now and then you have it as part of your registration right right so you you know that sally wants to go to the bolorama week two you click it you know how much you have to pay yeah right in an ideal world but i don't think we're going to be sorted out enough to do it so i don't know if we so we're not all inclusive anymore. Because at one point we were telling ourselves as being all inclusive. That way nobody gets left out if they don't have the funding to go or stuff like that. So we're shifting gears. Well, we well they're paying it one way or the other. I mean, they're all inclusive. So your price is going up. So they're going to be able to afford that. You right. Know what I mean? But we also have to consider, too, that parents are now even asking for off campus activities. That they and would pay for. Perhaps it should say backed by popular demand. Because <laughs> they did do it like three years ago. Remember that? But the way they handled it was very, was very manual. You know. Because I, when I'm writing grants, I'm like, we try to make it all inclusive. So we do it all in the tuition, so that kids are not handing over money, and we're not going through the process of. Right, but those are like. Um, 
No, no, I know, I know what you're saying. I, I just, saying. like, I don't want a kid who is there because they can afford summer camp not to be able to go because they can't afford the 5 or $10 no. or well, that's why I thought it was still important to keep the state parks in there, because that's free to them. Um, but also, all the activities are going to be cheap. So if it's an off-campus, at least make it reasonable. Not like, you know, not like a water country or Kennedy Lake. Or yeah, keep like it. That. You know, I had a couple of ideas about. Well, I did bring in the whole realm because I knew that they were going to be inexpensive. Um, but just, you know. The Manchester Sea Science Center, even that's really, it's cheap admission for the kids to get in. You know, they're getting their own lunch. But just something that's off campus and it's an activity. But Brown, Century is not cheap. I just threw it in there. I, I just, All these are just ideas. They're not, they're not anything that I've said in stone. And as far as I know, it's all community building. You know, so that it's like they're going to go there and they're going to be told. You are mm -hmm. going to be visiting this, you're doing this is happening now, this is happening now, this is happening now. You will do this activity and so on. So, so I get it. Yeah, I, I know it's just lovely. What about like Mount Agamemnon? Because I know for the Boy Scouts, because we were bringing a group, their charge was $3 a person. Um, or like main state parks, where it's a dollar a kid to get into a main state park. You could go over to Fort Mercedes, and that would be that would be something a little different. Um, Fort Park, yeah. And it's not going to be breaking the bank more than a whole lot of money. I'm so you're using this is, but this is in place of the state park, right? Right, you're saying. So, okay. right, yeah, right, yeah. Um, so the bus is is already paid for because that is all inclusive. Mm -hmm. So it would just be whatever it is mm -hmm. would be on top of. So I have a question for you: How much are you planning each one of these off-campus trips to be, and it, can that be worked into the tuition rate? Say, like it's twenty dollars per kid. Or fifteen dollars. We can't now because we already passed the budget based on <laughs> the tuition that we figured out without that. Right. Um, I understand what you're saying. You want to make it affordable. You don't want kids to be left behind, and I totally totally get that. But we also have half of the parents saying we need more activities. Right. If we don't give them more activities, then they're going to go somewhere else. Right. So that's kind of where I'm stuck. Is there, however, without putting it out there? Is there an option for a scholarship for those trips? That's what I was just thinking. Can we fundraise to offset that? How about a grant? <laughs> <laughs> you know, if somebody gives you money for a towards tuition, mm -hmm. can the can that be part of it? Is what I'm saying. So if I say I get tuition for my child. Will those be part of the tuition? If it's well, we've not we based the tuition on salaries. We base the tuition on paying salaries. Right. In but what I'm saying is, like for a scholarship, is the scholarship? Are we going to say the scholarship is all inclusive? So the scholarship, I have no idea what numbers are. I told you my numbers. Mm -hmm. So if this, if it costs five hundred dollars to go to camp for the summer, mm -hmm. plus another hundred for five extra trips, or twenty dollars. Is the scholarship for just the 500 and not the extra trips? Or is the scholarship Good question. for the whole <coughs> thing? You know, you, yeah, I know what you mean. I don't know if I have an answer for it, though. Because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think about the scholarship route. But now we're talking about adding another scholarship. So, tuition <laughs> is just based on what we need to cover salaries and like bus fees? Yeah, salary, cool bus, entry, school, right? um, includes all that stuff. So can we, I don't know what you have for next year going on, but can we add a note for next time we do budget season? Add in an activity fee line? Because I know, I, I think I did that for the teen camp. It was like activity fees, I think it was 
$2,500 on my expense side. And so I built that into the tuition. But so that would be, <clears throat> if we built a line in there, that's saying that we're paying for the activities. That's saying that we're paying for the off-campus trips. And, and I'm not saying that, that we have That would be my vision for well, the future. Well, if you have this budget item, you, could, you don't have to pay for it. You just have to pay for the revenue to cover it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and, and it's not saying that you're going to pay for it. You're saying just an offset. You're saying take it. Take it out. Take it out. It's all and then it's going to, and then you get your, it as part of your tuition. Your tuition is going to be higher than what you had estimated before, and it's going to cover the extra trip or, or the activity. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it doesn't have to be an <coughs> astronomical, or it doesn't have to be an astronomical all out of bank. It could be like we're going to put an activities line in so we can go to Oriental Trading and buy 30 different um, activity sets. So that when we have a rainy day, the kids can have an activity. Mm -hmm. So we could well, that's totally we have an activity line. Mm -hmm. that, that's totally different. But that's that's not what Helen on the street did. I, I thought you said activity is we're going somewhere off site. That's a paying for a ticket. Okay, not, so not an yeah. activity. It's a it's a supply for an activity you're going to do during the week at the, at the camp. It's for. But, this one's for, uh, it was the pool in the park. Yeah, because that's how it was. Under the activity? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just saying maybe in the future we should up that line yeah. to cover off-site activities. Yeah. But I would do that, not in your example, up your supply line. Yeah, this you is know, To cover that. Yeah. <clears throat> that's supply line for that. $20. So, so D, what they're saying kind of is a, is a good point because we did have a, whatever our bottom line on budget is, so that now, now if we're, you know, adding in, I don't know, if we do two of these things with 100 kids, I mean, we're not going to have 100 kids, but, I mean, that could be 100 kids, right? They're, oh, it's popular. If it's 20 bucks a kid, or less than like two grand right now on that budget, that we have to account for. Does it? Because they're paying extra money, we still need to have a budget item for that. Because <coughs> I don't understand why you cannot overspend as long as you have the revenue to spend it. So I guess I'm kind of confused by that. Because what you take in from them gets goes right back out. Right. I mean, I, I think in the other parts of the budget, I get that your budget is this, and this is what. But there are people who have overspent their line without any revenue coming in. I don't know. I, I need to have so what do we want to do about this? Because I need to roll out registration. Mm -hmm. Do we do we not offer off campus right now, or do we just or maybe just we put, <coughs> maybe we offer one, right? And maybe that, <laughs> and then can we kind of squirt that into our tuition increase? I mean, I know that's kind of well. What? I guess I don't understand how this is. have a box yeah. for an extra 10 what bucks in there? What saying is, is that you can't overspend what your budget is for, but what if you have more children? Because your, your budget contains, so you're saying we're going to cut it off there? Right. I mean, that doesn't, I'm, kind of, I'm sitting here thinking, like, I don't get right. that. Because we have a resource to fund it. So, right, I don't understand. If we're, to, if it, if we're just applying to the bus, yeah. well, even if that's part of it, you know, if it costs $10 to go, Bowling or whatever, mm -hmm. and um, so we're charging them twelve to cover the bus. Yeah. Then we're not spending any of the town's money other than <coughs> the towns which were already there. Mm -hmm. What we take in goes right back out. So yeah, that's okay. what I'm kind of confused by. That there's that, that statement that she said, like, and is what she said me. Sure. But I'm kind of. So My because, understanding is so that you can't go over our budget lines. This is how much. We was allocated, right. so that's how much right. you but have to bring have in. The revenue source that, over, that comes in. But you, you can't, can't offset it anyways. Well, you're going to be offset. It's, it, I would agree if you didn't have the offsetting revenue to support it. Right. We're not but saying. If, uh, if, you're spent, if you had $10,000 and you only took in nine and you spent 10, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. But if you if, if you spent 10 and you got 11 then, I mean, then you should be able to put in your 
I have so to talk to her. Would she, <laughs> I have to so would she be saying that. that because, let's just throw this out there, because in our income line, I don't have a line for $500 for offering off campus, I can't do it because I don't have the offset line <laughs> that, that it went out as of an expense. That's how I interpreted her email. So I can't offer anything because I didn't put. That's what I understand. Yeah, but but my, I, don't, I, don't, I don't. I Part of my understanding is, is that okay. it's the bottom line. How much ever. So if, so if team doesn't spend all of their money, maybe you could. Well, you are, you are bottom line. Yes. The whole picture. Right. And we so, but, what's, but that. what's the difference between. As long as it doesn't cost contaminate money, I don't think that that should be a problem. That's, and that's, it's all there. It's not like we had history money. And we, we had surprise field trips. We had to pay for yeah. buses, right? Mm -hmm. we, right. We had surprise field trips because of things that happened, right? Right. right. So why, how is that any But that should be part of your contingency. Your right. surprises are part of your contingency. Okay. Don't you have a contingency line? Yeah. Right? Dee, do you have a contingency line? Yes, we do. So <laughs> then you can pull this out of these fees can come up. Under contingency. In okay. fact, Celia, just so you know, <laughs> the contingency line is built into our tuition, just so you know. Now it's an income and it's an expense. So Bam. we can use this as a contingency. Right. Don't, let me just have a conversation with her. Yeah. yeah. I'll let you know. I'm going to call her tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I'm really confused by this. As long as you have a revenue source to back it up, it should not be a problem. Because we're not saying we let's spend this money. No, it's and not maybe we'll get it. Our, it's our, not our sure. money. We did a birthday party. Right. Well, that's it. I mean, it's it not like anything to kid, do it? with the town paying something or an alternate sort of that's, thing. It's going to happen. Right. And, and I agree that if you have a line, you can't overspend it unless you have a revenue source mm -hmm. to do it. But I was, the way I interpreted her email was that you only have this amount. This is all you can spend. But you don't know how many campers you're going to get. So are you saying that? The number we budget is all we can do. So that's, that's going to make a difference in whether or not we actually offer. I'll talk to her tomorrow and I will email you all. Or with my answer. <laughs> $330. Uh, I guess the loophole it would be is because um, you're saying that and you can give donations for a specific item. So each parent could say I'm donating $10 for my child to go bowling. I'm donating. <laughs> talking about seven weeks so d in your vision so out of those seven weeks are we thinking five state parks and two of these off campus i originally things? was thinking four and three so i was thinking three pool four trips but um as far as the four trips are concerned at least two of them would be like extremely inexpensive so you're thinking three state parks okay. you said pool the three state parks and then, sorry, um, <laughs> it's getting late. That's why. Yeah, 
and then and two um, for off-site. I was thinking of if we want to flip it, we can. But again, I was thinking about the staleness of the state parks. So that was one big thing that was on that survey is the state parks are getting stale with the kids. And then two, inexpensive, right? Yeah, again, if you pay 10 bucks to go to the, what did you say about Seed Dogs? What did you say? Seed Dogs game. Seed Dogs is 10? Yeah, as long as we could do it on a official guy. Uh, the only one I pulled off so far was the Sea Dogs. I didn't have much time. Sea Dogs. Pulled too much off. You can look at that if you want. Um, but it was, you know, it was inexpensive. Mm -hmm. Find something that costs the kids 10, 15, or nothing at all. Um, you know, go to the state house or something. <laughs> have a picnic on the state house grounds or something like that. So this says even group rates, it says general admission is six bucks. Um, I, I don't know if it's that page or another page, but there's a picnic one. That's oh, when they get inclusive. Yeah. That oh, and they get stuff. food? Yeah. It's all inclusive. What did we let last summer. year? What did we let last year when, when you got um, mm -hmm. Lindsay's mom's Skylock? Yeah. yeah. Come with a Skylock, not her personal one. <laughs> I'm gluten free, so I can have pizza. That was part of the lunch. So mm -hmm. I went to get fries. Directly, so everything is done through the student. What UNH does 
is they have to meet with us, um, I think it's once during the course of uh, the season to talk about the student and how the student's doing. The other thing, the other option we have to the student is to meet with him or her weekly and just either mentor or just talk about the program. The other thing we have to do is make sure that the student is immersed into our program because not only are they there to get credits, but they're there to help us and part of this whole um, program for them is to produce something for us, which would be oh. anything from a process and procedures manual yeah, nice. to uh, all sorts of ideas. Anything that they could see maybe a gap for us or an opportunity, they will do a project on it and they'll hand us something real at the end of this hmm. 10 weeks. So, okay, so that's thing. what this is here. <laughs> but this is not something you're looking for the director or the assistant director. This is for them to do something for you, and you get it in return. That's a director. That's getting a director in there. Okay, it's not a separate program. I'm confused. So, are you looking to fill so one of these positions with this? Mm -hmm. Yes. But then this isn't really an issue because we have that kind of money. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So. She, so I was concerned about paid versus unpaid because I don't want to bring a director or, or an assistant director in, hopefully a director, because their, rec, their, their degree is in recreation management. So mm -hmm. if we can get somebody who's 20, 21, still in the program, we could. I mean, we've got, the, we've got those salaries. Yeah. yeah. I mean. So I asked her, I said, what, what sort of salary do the kids get? Mm -hmm. um, do the students get? So she looked at some samplings based on our account size, mm -hmm. and she said that's where I wrote there is what they're being paid. Now, 450 total. Yeah, and that's to cover their expenses, like their gas and whatever else to get here. But you can compensate more by yes. taking them into your program. It's totally up to you, but I would pay more to entice so if you've got students looking at the board, I would want them to, get, <laughs> to choose us. Yeah. So could we like, I mean, I hate to say that, but if they, if we had somebody call us and they're like, well, I see you have a $5,400 study fund, and we say, yeah, well, okay. No, we say, well, for UNH, it's 4400 <laughs> Well, that's why I wanted to be careful about what we need UNH. <laughs> well, as I say, yeah, you, you, you might want to, I mean, definitely all of this, but you might want to point out. <laughs> where would they see our salary? Yeah. Where would they see it? Well, where, where are we posting? Are we posting it on the town website? But what we give to them doesn't have to have that on there. That could be. Or we could seriously oh. lower Oh, we could not also, have it on the on the notice of employment and then we, talk about how it. How about we write salary? Salary. Negotiable. <laughs> Negotiable. How about nothing? No. No. Based, on, based on experience and not put a dollar amount because okay. if you don't. If you don't have to spend the right. five thousand, uh -huh. yeah, exactly. the... yeah. <laughs> that's where I was going. That was in the back of my mind. That's what Because you have right that money. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a hit or miss though. We again, they do not get involved. The staff there does not get involved. We, it's between us and the student. Mm -hmm. So it's up to us. We may not find somebody, so we have to make sure we have a plan B to. Right, we start. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. But when is as soon as it when is it between you I can't talk. When can you do it? <laughs> so So maybe we should put a range on that so to you and age that. too. So they're seeing but less so, than what you were. Yeah. Right. But doesn't mean you don't if you got the right person and you're right. battling between so another district. Because if they're looking if they're looking at four hundred and fifty dollars at other places and we write salary negotiable. Two to to 4K. Well, we can say one to two. <laughs> well, yeah, and then if you if you yeah, really like want this person and they're kind of thinking, I don't know, yeah. you have negotiation power. For the assistant director, too. Exactly. So, well, what we need to do for next steps, we need to get these done. Yeah. And we yeah, hand yeah. it over to her, mm -hmm. um, the, the contact I have there, and it gets posted. But right now, she's um, doing a resume building class with all these students. Mm -hmm. So we have a month, maybe. Well, last, maybe a little bit less to play yeah. with, but we need to get it over to If you guys possible. get it to me by the weekend, I will send them back out to you by the end of the weekend. Okay. So All right. Get me anything good. that you want modified or... Because then we can use that money, right? 
take it, take it. And it's built into the tuition, so you don't have to pay. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. That Can would be a win-win. Win. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Right. And for the student, uh, for the uni, for the I students. actually have somebody in mind for Teen Camp. I just thought I'd tell you that is a, a client of mine. <laughs> um, she's a teacher, a uh, special ed teacher, and she's she's also a. a All right, let's talk about, I don't know if you were going to say that, let's, let's discuss meeting. Um, on the 26th of February, I will be flying home from Jamaica. Okay, so I'm worried about will you be back? <laughs> I will not be back for a meeting. I will be back at like midnight that night. I do think it's important we meet before registration. Absolutely. Can we do the, I know it's because you can't get close, because we do the 28th. Because the 27th is astronomy night at the elementary school. So I might send them one of those. You know, if they start there. Oh, 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 You don't want to be here with us, Denise. I just want to crawl under the blanket and go, oh, oh no. <laughs> so with the 28th, which is that one of week before that, I'm writing it down. I will, I will, I will be away. Oh, you're away. Yeah, that's yeah, that's that's what we'll be Feel free to meet without me. The 28th is a, is a, Thursday? is a Thursday. Rollinsford Grief School basketball team. Well, we can always, <laughs> um, at 6.30 p.m. We can always, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, we wanted to go live on the 1st, but maybe we can, if we push it to the 8th, I mean, at least I can, because we really want, what I want to do is get a registration info sheet out there. Somewhere can we even it's Facebook or whatever, just so at least people know what to expect when registration goes open. Well, and even when people started asking last year, I think you know we're like getting the word out. Okay, when's registration is they is, is kind of like okay, yeah. even March eighth. Mm -hmm. So it's really pretty, pretty good. Yeah, we can do that. You it's fun. It's fun. It gives us an extra week too. Like so. So what I'll do is I'll get a, a, an info sheet put together. And I can blast it out on social media so people know when it's coming, yep. when it opens. So do you want to move it back to March 5th? And then that'll give us, if you move registration back to the 8th, kick off, we can meet March 5th. That works for me. How's that for you, Jamil? So we meet March 5th? Okay. Okay. That's a Tuesday. It's a week after your 60th. You might have recovered by then. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that works for okay. me. Okay, so that's yep. it. Yep. I'll just have to schedule my Boy Scout meetings to go. Well, oh, that that'll be fine. Yeah. So because they'll make the twenty sixth and the twelfth. So you guys can disregard this on the back here. We'll just leave you that whole time. Tuesday. So it's just the first one that we're sending, right? Yeah. And they're all Tuesdays. Yep. And they're all Tuesdays. And are they available on Tuesday? Oh, wait. So, oh yeah. No, that works. Um, I wanted. I only printed off two copies. I have. As of today, I don't know if anybody wants to see them. Results of the senior mailing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You can look through them. Um, Is it one page? Uh, it's yeah. three pages. Oh, okay. Three pages? Do you have another one? Let me <laughs> um, 30, between 35 and 40 as of now. Oh, that's not bad. Out of how many? 1,100. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here, you know what? Here it goes. Sorry, one more thing. This is a requirement to be an H. I see you guys knew what it was. For us uh, in particular. So D, I'm wondering if you and I can set up a meeting at some point to talk about the scholarship because I printed off the letter from last year. Sure. And we're not going to have time to deal with it tonight. Yep. And then we can talk about activities too. Sure. When do you want to do that? I don't know. Is well, it okay for just you and I to meet? We can talk about that, right, Denise? Mm -hmm. And you're gone the week of the 18th? I am. Okay, so I maybe leave the 19th, so. I can do it the 11th or the 15th. Either one works for me. Well, the 15th is better. Um, 15th. 
changes the situation. Mm -hmm. What are we yeah. meaning about activities? <laughs> and and <laughs> that will never happen, right? And yeah. what? Activities yeah. and yeah. scholarship. I can actually show you guys the info sheet then too, and I'll, I'll send it out to everybody else. Okay. Let me know what you think. So the 15th time. Time. What? What time?